All right, boys and girls. Yes, it is back to back here, uh, Rum and Coke Night. And uh, let me get that music turned off there. I like that song, but it doesn't even play the entire time. Uh, yeah, this is going to be a little different kind of Rum and Coke. Um, it's basically going to be Lana and I, although I call it Rum and Coke because I want people to kind of join in at some point. Um, and if they want to drink, that's great. Uh, I'm not drinking tonight. Yesterday I had my fill. I had three drinks, and that's my limit. Uh, people know that's, that's all I could take. Uh, so I did not have a fun day today. Uh, nursing from that because it's not a lot of alcohol but for me three is my limit so i'm just having regular coffee tonight but land in here you're gonna vibe as much as you want because you're landing <laughs> but... be here to talk about you know higher level items than than just you know, does Darth Vader exist? And uh, and and that's I think I think this is going to be a really a, a hopefully for people who are tired of the debating facts, um, mean that that seems to go on. Give people some insight into um, some of the implications of what it, what what's being being said. And so we're so Steve and I are going to um, explore this. I guess what we call it at the big kids table. Um, to ask some, some ask and explore some things. We don't have, you know, all the answers, but we're going to certainly explore and ask, ask a number of questions. Yeah, and for people, uh, unfortunately, the way camera is our uh, lens camera is a, in a four by three mode, so I didn't want to stretch him out, so he looked like an elongated man. So he's a square because you know he's square, and I'm, I'm a, so I know I know it doesn't look pretty, but it looks better than this than having him stretched out. Okay, so yeah, I, I, uh, I'm I'm sorry, I don't know why I don't have pixels way out here. But but yeah, that's the way I, it goes. Oh well, but like like Landon said, uh, he, he and I are really like tired of going back to first base every time we get into discussions. It's like playing hopscotch and you're stuck in the first square. Uh, we want to kind of take it to the next level, talk about uh, the intricacies of some of these uh, arguments that I have, the logics that I use, the epistemic uh, consequences, the second order consequences, uh, things of that nature, which I don't think a lot of people ever get a chance to really get into because. All they ever hear is, you know, the very basics over and over and over again. And then you have people out there that are just saying, well, Steve's wrong, yet they don't explain why I'm wrong. Uh, not one person has put a proof out there showing that any of my, my logics have been incorrect so far. Now, some of them might be. Like, I know that my, my, my proof for weak atheism, agnosticism, weak theism, um, I've changed it to implication rather than equality. I don't think there's any errors in that. If there are... So they haven't been pointed out, but um, uh, this is the this the ones that we're going to be going over now. This like this drawing here that Nanan helped do the uh, legend for. Um, it, it's pretty bulletproof. I mean, I've had mathematicians look at it; they find nothing wrong with it. And so, people arguing in perpetuity on Twitter about this argument and my other arguments, I don't see the point any longer. I, I mean, it, it's it's basically put up a shut up time, show the logic is wrong, or move on. Because why would people want to waste their time on something so incredibly simple? that it's like arguing, again, one plus one equals three. We know it's not one plus one equals three, we know it's two. Why waste our time with it? We wanna take it to the kind of the next level. So Land is gonna kind of like lead us through this because I don't know where we're gonna to get to go because <laughs> he just wanna talk about a bunch of stuff and you know me, I'm, I fly by the seat no. of my pants. Um, and oh, we have a, we have a, uh, a, a contribution. Yes, Kawasa, my buddy Kawasa, 5001. Thank you, Kawasa, you're too kind to us. He says, two days of rum and coke in a row, you drunkards, but except, <laughs> I'm not going to front. This is just straight coffee right now. So, so but it's so, so I'm going to progress. I got to progress this on some wine and then go to some uh, margarita made by uh, La Fiesta. So we'll we'll get there eventually. Drunk Landon is also, fun, Landon. <laughs> and 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 you know I want I want to also say Steve that that you know initially when I heard this this general debate, um, I was kind of bored with it because apart from the factual Boolean logic, it was like you know what. It, it seemed kind of tiresome, mm -hmm. and and there is there is, however, this this notion of of colloquial use and words that that have sort of these these fuzzy meanings, and um, whether or not that's useful in in everyday language. Certainly in mathematics, in like physics, we have a language. Mathematics has a very specific language in order to help convey logical meaning. And and even in informal proofs that you might you might present, you still have a a way of describing, and you and you eschew or you try to avoid words that are confusing or misleading or ambiguous. Or that, that 
Yes. And and so I, that's what I really saw. So when originally when you mentioned about this debate stuff, I wasn't really interested because I said, well, what's, you know, is it, isn't the colloquial use good enough? The, the thing that I saw from the debate was that um, there was a significant number of logical errors being made. And, and this diagram is, is a good example of this. I understand that this diagram right now, the one that he has up on the screen and one I created, um, you know, there, there is a proposition and there's a belief. And, and this system works regardless of really what the, effectively what the proposition is or what the belief is, right? It's logic. It, 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 you, you, you plug in the symbols and the logic works. Um, it's, it's, it's factual. Now that you can argue over whether this is, if this is useful and you can argue over whether there's a better thing, but, but you can't argue against the logic. Uh, let me ask you then one quick. Uh, first of all, Josiah Hanson, $2. Thank you. Busy now, but we'll watch tomorrow. Thanks for the video. Appreciate it, Josiah. We hope that you do watch it tomorrow. Uh, so, okay. So as it stands now, I, I think this logic is pretty airtight. I, like I said, you're not the only mathematician I know, contrary to what you may believe. You're not the only mathematician in my life, Landon. Um, oh. <laughs> you're, you're, you're my favorite, but... I'll, I'll, accept, I'll accept that limit. All right. Uh, pun. Oh, man. Uh, but yeah, no, <laughs> nobody's found any problems with this. Um, there is somebody on Facebook that I debated, uh, excuse me, on Twitter that I debated uh, about a year ago, over a year ago. They're still saying there's problems, but everybody's been talking to them going, look, you haven't demonstrated there's a problem. You're, you're just not understanding this. And as you said, when people turn it into a semantic argument, when people start bringing up definitions, I, my, I'm going to tune out from now on. That's not the level of discussion I want to have any longer. Uh, I'm going to be talking to Snake Was Right on Modern Data Base Channel on the 4th. Um, it's going to be part two, so he's kind of grandfathered in that. But from now on, yeah. anybody who says that Steve's about definitions of prescriptivism, they're just wrong, ignore him. It, it's just, I can't yeah. deal with that level of nonsense any longer. Because all they're trying to do <laughs> is say that Steve's logic is wrong because reasons and this whatever definitional stuff, which makes no difference to the logic whatsoever. Yeah. So let's talk about, let's talk about this word prescriptive, right? Um, there are people that will go to a dictionary look up a definition and say, that's what this word must mean. Mm -hmm. And they're wrong that to do that. <laughs> and, 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 and what they demonstrate is they don't understand what a purpose of the dictionary is. Um, dictionaries, classic linguistic dictionaries, are to document the use of a language. Correct. Not to dictate what it is. I mean, that, in terms of, now, now yeah. there are exceptions, right? Yeah, there are there, prescriptive there are, dictionaries. Yeah. They do exist, or they and, did and like, exist. Like, 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 you know, IEEE has a technical dictionary where they call it a dictionary, but really, as you might say, it's more as a, as a, as a, as a definition set mm -hmm. for what happens when you when you refer to 802.1, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, blah, ISO standards does, do I believe. High bit stuff. Those, those, are, those are very, um, very prescribed. But, but in a classical language dictionary, uh, the, 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 what's, what the linguists are trying to do is to document how words are being used. Yeah, it's called, it's called, it's called synchronic versus diachronic. Diachronic is over a period of time. Synchronic is modern usage in this time period. How are these words being used? So when I say that a dictionary doesn't define words, I mean that very seriously. It, it, it doesn't define it. It tells you how they're being used. When we talk about def definitions in math, that is by definitions. If I say this is defined in math to be, that is like a triangle is defined by three, having three sides with you know mm -hmm. three angles. Um, th th this is what a triangle is. It, it's by, do by definition. Uh, zero factorial is defined in mathematics to be one. Now, there are some ways that you could formulate this using the Zeta Riemann function, but it's still, by definition, zero factorial has been defined to be one. So if you see yes. zero factorial, you can put in one and you get the same thing. It doesn't change anything. There's no uh, what's called um, intentionality issues, right? Because it, do it doesn't change the proposition. If I say zero factorial um, equ equals one, or I say one equals one, nothing changes in that, right? There's no, it's called, yeah. it's called uh, there's a, a transparency to the proposition rather than opacity. So there's no change in, in the meaning of the, of the, or the truth value of the proposition, right? Yes. So in, in, in a ways as well, it would, again, with, with a dictionary, um, you know, if you look at something like the Oxford you know, the, uh, uh, Dictionary of the English Language, what you'll find is words and citations of early use or first use. They're trying to document how the English language evolved. And so it's kind of ironic that someone goes and uses the dictionary to say, no, you can't say it that way. That doesn't mean that way because the dictionary says blah. 
I mean, example, a good example of this is the word through. Um, it is, it, 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 there, there are people who, if you write, if you type T-H-R-U, will say, that's wrong. That's not how you spell through. I, I still use T-R-S-A-U, R-U, and even though it's, you know, spelled differently, but, but, I but, still use but, it. But here's the case where they go, and they go to a dictionary and say, see, this is how it's supposed to be spelled. And, and the answer is, well, that dictionary is not up to date. Um, there is a modern usage. And in fact, not only did you recognize that through was through, but you also demonstrated that you didn't understand what the purpose of the dictionary is. And an up-to-date dictionary mm -hmm. would start to, to document that through is being used the way it is. Mm -hmm. I, and, I have no problem with that. It, but, but some people do. And that's, right. that's that sometimes when, when, they, when they go to give an argument and they, they go to a definition to try to try to take a documented use of a language and bring that as a fact to say, you and, can't use that word this way. And what do we call those types of people? Prescript <laughs> well, but they're called prescriptivists, right? And I tell people, yeah. look, yes. I'm not a prescriptivist. Right. I'm a descriptivist. I use words like through. If I was a prescriptivist, I wouldn't do things like that. I don't hold that you have to abide by strict rules of the English language, right? I didn't give, as a matter of fact, most writers nowadays, they don't care about formal rules. Look at the best writers. You want a dangling participle, have one. You want a split infinitive, have one. If this is how you want to convey the information yeah. to get something across, nothing wrong with that. The rules of grammar and English are basically based upon usages, right? I mean, there are, I mean, informal writings, you, yeah, but you still have some formal writings, right? And I get that, right? But in all, in all fairness to how we convey meaning, we as people, like when I write my blogs, I can write my blog any way I want. I could use the word through if I want to. And if somebody says, well, you can't use that because they're not spelled right. Well, no, that is spelled right on conventional usages in, in, in a synchronic sense. So when people say that I don't use colloquialisms, I certainly do. If the meaning is coherent, if the meaning is across, I don't have a problem with that. But if it leads to irrationality, it leads to category errors, if it leads to issues, then I'm probably not going to use those terms. This is my biggest problem with big atheism. Yes. And, it, and, it does. and one of the things you could argue is, is, is that is the communication effective? Remember that, that when you are communicating with somebody and they fail to understand, you cannot simply say, well, that's because they're dumb. Or are they, you know, they're, they're, they're ignorant, right? There's been a failure of communication. And sometimes that failure of communication is because the, the speaker is using terms in a way that's different from the listener. Right. right. So, so you don't agree on the terms. Yeah. So let me ask you this, Landon. If, if I'm having a conversation with you on, on some scientific topic that, we're, that I'm at least familiar with enough, that you're, you're more than familiar with enough, where the language that we're using is at a, at a level that you and I are going to understand each other. And somebody jumps in and says, well, hey, look, that's not the way this word is used. And they, we use it like, it's, it's actually, this word is, means this. And we're like, no, no, no. We're talking about in a very specific domain of discourse. Like, for example, if I and you talk about evolution, yeah, we're going to yeah, understand. Like theory. Yeah. Or theory. theory you know, we're not going to mean it as a stipulation or a guess or a, you know, a speculation, I should say. We're, we're going to mean it as a well substantiated body of evidence that has been tried over and over again, has predictive ability, but makes predictions, that kind of stuff. And, and evolution, we're going to be used as a change of elite frequency in any given population of species from one generation to the next generation over time. This is normative. I mean, we understand these stipulative definitions and we're able to communicate. So when I say evolution, if somebody jumps in the conversation and says, well, evolution just means change, or I mean, theory just means guess, they're not at a level to be having these conversations, I, I don't think, with us. Now, if they want to use that terminology in their creationist groups, go nuts. They're allowed to. The ACA and these atheist groups, they can use words any way they want. But what I see happen is when I'm talking to somebody in philosophy, about philosophy, who actually is even a philosopher, and somebody jumps in the conversation and says, well, that's not what atheism is. You know, atheism is this, and they're acting prescriptively. That's a mis yeah. That's a fundamental misunderstanding on yeah. their behalf. So let's look at an example. You know, when 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 you're talking about in, in in the realm of science, you're talking about a theory, and then someone jumps in and says, "Well, that's just a theory." Right now, what's happening here is that they're using theory in a particular colloquial sense to say you're just speculating. You're just as opposed to in science, a scientific theory is the pinnacle of 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 certainty you you could if you're going to be in that colloquial phrase you could replace scientific theory with fact right uh now, yeah body of facts i would place it with a body of facts yes yeah, yeah, that's what scientific yes. theory is the body and, of and facts. but but there's a reason for something being a scientific theory is because it it it's something that's been 
it's an aspect, you will, of 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 let's say the natural world that's been um, tested over and over again and verified in in a, in, a, in accordance with some scientific method, right? And that there's using acceptable methods of observation and protocols and measurement and evaluation of results and on and on and on. Um, so it it it's the case sometimes in the case where where if a scientist is talking about the word theory and a let's say a creationist is using the word theory in a pejorative sense, the argument they have is not effective. There's not effective communication because they're using the same word in, in radically different contexts. Exactly. Um, and by the way, I got a super chat for Kwasa. Thank you again, Kwasa. I thought he's too kind to this channel. I, I, I do oh, notice that. Thank you that. very much, by the way, Kwasa. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Kwasa is very, very kind to this channel. He says, but in debates and discussions, shouldn't opposing sides agree to prescribe certain uses of words before we're proceeding on the discussion? Usually, in most cases, yes. The problem is, Kwasa, is that like on this particular topic, people have been so ingrained and indoctrinated to think of these words to be only one use. As a matter of fact, I, I, I mean, on Ra's blog, he actually says there's only one correct use of the, of the word atheism. I mean, this is what he says. This is what he's argued for years, right? I've argued against that, and yet I'm labeled a prescriptivist, which is really strange because his, he's having prescriptivist behavior. I'm the one saying there's more than one correct way to use words, including atheism. I mean, it doesn't matter what the word is. This logic, as, as Landon had pointed out, can be used for any proposition. I mean, you can say it's for Darth Vader exists. Okay, great. doesn't change anything. The logic has to hold true regardless of the semantic content that you're putting in there, right? I mean, if I say the word... Um, Gato or cat, right? I mean, those both refer to the same type of object, right? One is just in, yes. in Spanish, one is in English, right? So it doesn't matter what I say, like, una gato, a cat, or una, uh, a cat. Those phrases refer to the same things. The logic is going to be the same regardless if I do it in Spanish or Egypt, uh, English. Those are just semantic differences, right? Linguistic differences. Oh. So if I replace a certain word like God exists with, with, with Darth Vader exists, the logic should exactly be completely the same. There should be absolutely nothing changes with regards to the logic, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, now, now again, assuming no intentionality yes, and, differences. And, sure. And so, so let's take an example of this. Um, in mathematics, when we use as an expression, we say x plus x equals two x. Um, what we're doing is we're 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 not saying oh this 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 x plus x equals two x only applies for three and seven. Yeah. No, they apply for for values. Now, understand when you when there is a case where where what you have to do is you have to agree. Uh, as it said, it, you you need to be able to have an. I would say, Guaza, you need to have in order to have effective discussion, you need to be using terms in a similar way. And and it is a problem that there are some people who are sort of professional professional online charlatans, and what they do is they start putting up definitions that are sub, you know, that they're kind of suspect. And then they start bringing in colloquial use that have pejorative terms to sort of discount the other side. Exactly. And so, and, so oh, oh, go ahead. Please go ahead. Okay. So, so uh, Kawasa makes a good, he says, but without common ground to use certain words um, in certain meanings, all that comes out of discussion is talking past each other. And I, and I agree with Kawasa, but here's the thing. That is the point of the discussion. When I'm using certain words in a philosophical normative context and I'm being told by some professional sergeants that he's pointed out, or people that just are not well versed in philosophy or logics, yeah. and they're saying that I'm wrong by fiat, then how how do we have a meeting in the mind of what uses the words? Because I'm using words in according to how they're using in the domain of discourse, right? I mean, this is well established fact. There are people still out there that disagree with that, but they're getting far and fewer between because it's an objective fact, right? It's not just anybody's opinion. You can go look in philosophy of how these terms are used. This is normative. But when they're saying Hey Steve, you know that's not what this is. Uh, this word is only used one particular way, and this is it. And I say, well, no, it's not. Here's all these citations of used differently, and this is overwhelmingly the normative case. Then you, then you, then you're having a, a difference, uh, a fundamental difference of them saying, look, you, I, I can't use a word in a specific way that's used professionally or academically or scientifically or philosophically. They're, they're just saying, no, Steve, that, that's not used that way. That doesn't exist. That's not a correct definition. That's straw manning. They, they'll throw out all these different things, which is absolutely insanity to me. And, and yeah. so, I mean, granted, less and less people are doing that. I have seen a change, 
but it still happens. And when it does, I just think to myself, this person has been indoctrinated. This is brain. This is what I consider to be brainwashed to think a very specific way and not think for themselves. Sure. So let's let's talk about some some things that again regarding, for example, this this um, this diagram. Um, in the diagram, we see uh, we see uh, P the proposition, B the belief, and we see in the four possible Boolean states. And and you know so so not B P B B not P not B not P and and B P are, are the four states. Um, because what we're doing, at least in Boolean logic, is that when you have when you have two variables that can be in two states, you have a combination of four values. And so what you see that he showed with those those diagrams is he's labeled the four states, and you can find all four com, you know, all all the all the four combinations in each of those two diagrams. And and you know he 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 made the point of saying. You know, if P is blah exists, or P is blah does not exist, the 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 logic states still hold. The labels you put on it are are another another matter. What you can't argue is over the logic. You could argue whether there's more useful labels, but then you're not really talking about whether it's factual. You're talking about maybe it's, preference. Yeah. And, yeah, I'm not, this is not a utility argument by any means. This is actually a, a, a simple argument that if you allow X, then you have to allow Y for, or else a special yes. pleading. That, that's what the logic would boil down to. If, if, you, if this, then this. If you allow A, you have to learn, allow B, because if you don't allow B for A, if you allow A, there's a special pleading fallacy in yeah. there. That's exactly what the argument yeah. boils down to. That's, that's what it is. Um, and but and this logic shows this to be the case that, look, the logic is, is sound. So if, if, you, if you say... Um, I think it's like this. If I allow uh, X equals two, but I don't allow X equals three, uh, and I don't put a domain or restriction or anything like that, right? It's just, you know, general math. If I have no justification for not restricting it, that's special pleading if I don't, if you don't allow me to do that, right? Unless you say, look, here's my, yeah. here's my, here's no, my domain, right? I'm, my domain, I'm, it, the domain is like um, zero to two, right? Then, and of course you're restricted from putting in three. There's a, there's a justification there because I'm putting in a, a restriction. But if I just say, look, there's no restriction here. There's no justification for why this is the case. That, by definition, again, that is more prescriptively of what special pleading. And I think formal or informal fallacies, you could probably get away with saying by definition. I, I tend to do it more in math, but when it's a formal fallacy or it's an informal fallacy, the reason I say by definition because you can mostly, in most fallacies that I've seen, you generally could put it in a mathematical sentence for it, right? In, in, in many of them, sure. right? You know, it's like, what's, what, you know, what's, what's a, you know, argument from ignorance, right? You know, uh, something along the lines of holding P to be true with, because P has not been proven false, right? But, but so yes. mostly things I think are prescriptive in some ways, right? I, I don't mind a little bit of prescriptivism when there's actually a format, an algorithm, of, 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 of something you can say, this is the format for this fallacy. That's, if you see it, it has been committed. That is okay to be prescriptive, I think. Because you're not describing sure, something yeah. at that point, you're prescribing yeah. it. So, so beyond what, what, so across this, you know, first, you know, this comment about, you know, having to agree on terms, that, that is certainly the case. If you don't have common language or agreement on terms, you're going to have problems. The other, the other thing, and, 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 and Steve's alluded to this with his previous statement, is that you have to understand what is your realm, what are your axioms, we would call it. Uh, what is your, what is it, what is the context? Um, and in a case of this thing about, atheist agnostic theist if you if your context was colloquial use you're going to have a different discussion than if you're talking about philosophical definitions of belief absolutely so so the one of the things you have to do and not only have the same language but have the same agreement over the act or we call i you know in mathematics we would call it axiomatic system so so for example um you know and i talk about the equation x plus x equals 2x and and you say well that's 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 true well there are axiomatic systems where that is not true and and if you're going to bring up an unusual axiomatic system you need to be you need to de be sure that that's clearly stated you don't want to <clears throat> confuse someone um for for that so so yeah. how you know there there are for example operators where the where the plus operator is no longer 
commutative, right? So, so, um, so if you say x plus y equals two x, um, and you say, well, that's that that implies you can subtract x on both sides and say x equals y, but that uh, that has an assumption about axioms and how you how you go about it. So, um, maybe simplify it by saying you need to also agree under what context. Maybe again, uh, with this case of agnostic atheist theist, a colloquial use, a, 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 a religious use, or a philosophical use, ha you need to start by saying, here's what I'm here's where I'm coming from. Now the other side doesn't have to agree. Right. They're, they don't <laughs> have to agree with your systems. So if I came to argue to Steve and say, well, colloquial, this is what it means. Steve is free to say, but but colloquial is not useful. Mm -hmm. I'm not interested in arguing from that 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 context. All right, let me give you an example uh, for the audience there of what you were talking about. Let's talk about, like, for example, if I'm if I'm in a different field other than that, that reels, if I'm in Galois theory, for example, yeah. in Galois yeah. theory, I can make a I can make a system where one plus one equals zero. I mean, yes. So I mean, in Galois theory, you're you're it's completely different. You're not you're no longer in the reels any longer. You're in a completely different system of mathematics. And so if, if, if Landon and I were talking about Galois theory, which, by the way, I have talked about Galois theory with yeah. um, and it's fun. Your, your, you, you, a mutual you, you friend should, of ours, uh, Dr. Yes. Tr uh, Trailer. Yes. Yeah. Um, by the way, yes. I hope she's doing well. I haven't talked to her in ages, but uh, she's still on my Facebook. But I hope she's doing well. Give her my best regard if you talk to her. Will do. But uh, we, had a, you know, we had a great discussion on Galois theory. And so if, if me and Landon are talking about Galois theory and we're like one plus one equals zero and somebody jumps into the discussion who doesn't know Galois theory and says, oh, look, you guys are idiots. You got one plus one equals two. And we just look at them with just stark disbelief, right? Because we're like, look, we're not talking about the reels. We're talking about something else. But they're talking about a they, ring. Right. Yeah they, yeah. they don't understand rings, fields, you know, um, uh, uh, groups, monads, whatever. There's going to be a there's going to be a problem in having this discussion, but we're trying to you know we're trying to have a discussion, and this is why I see what happens in these communities. Though uh, I'm having a discussion with somebody, we're talking about something that that, that these groups are not familiar with. Uh, well, I'm going to be like people know starting a new show with Dr. Rana on reasons to believe, and I've been you know I've been told by their secretary, hey Steve, you're an enigma to these the you know the people that watch us. The you know reasons to believe has a lot of Christians that follow them. It's a pretty big organization. But they also have been buying, buying into some of these, these things. And they're like, you know, the, the, the things that you bring to the table, Steve, are fresh and new and exciting to our viewers because they've never seen anything like this. They, they also have been, quote, you know, kind of indoctrinated, not because of Christianity, but because of the atheist communities out there saying th certain things. So they've been loving me bringing to their attention that some of the things out there have not been correct. This is why I'll be talking to Dr. Rana about these things. But me and Dr. Rana could discuss these things on a level and, and kind of explain to the audience where before they didn't have any exposure to this, which is the same thing that happens if, if me and Landon are talking yeah. about Galois theory, which, by the way, I'm nowhere, I'm nowhere enough to discuss that much about Galois theory. But, but the point being is if we're talking about Galois and I say one plus one equals zero and somebody jumps in and says, no, it's two, then... That's the same thing that I'm seeing in these types of philosophical discussions. The, the atheist community has just been so low in their conversations that they don't understand when people are having a higher conversation. And when they make videos and they make videos and they, they say Steve's wrong, but they don't understand the, the domain that I'm talking about in philosophy well enough to, yeah. to criticize it. Does that, does that make sense, Landon? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so you have to understand the, the, the context, if you will, in logic we call it the axiomatic system you're operating under. And, and even in technical fields, such as uh, medicine has uses terms differently than, let's say, astronomy, mm -hmm. and yet they're not the case that one's right and one's wrong. It it, it is, however, a, a, a it, it, so that's why it's important for you to 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 understand even something like physics. If you are operating under an Antonian mechanic system, and then you introduce conditions that are relativistic. You just you, you you've, you're 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 going to talk past each other because you're going to come from a different <clears throat> set of, of assumptions, and so in addition to it's important that you use terms, you agree on the terms, is you agree on the context that those terms are, and and you know an example again is in in a court of law, a a defense that is trying to impugn the prosecution's charge is going to come up with. Why might people say excuse or excuse or reason or reason saying, you know, would you believe this? Would you believe the 
the my client doesn't exist? Would you believe that my client wasn't there? Would you believe that it wasn't um, the, 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 the victim didn't exist? I mean, they, they go through all kinds of stuff. And and in, in, in normal people parlance, if you try to do that to your mom, at some point, by the third time you try something that your mom's going to say, I don't want to hear any more excuses. Yeah, yeah, Go it's, clean it's, your room. exactly. It's, it's pretty well done, right? right? But, but, but in a court of law, in, in law, they have a different way that the court is, is doing something differently than perhaps you might have in, let's say, a formal proof. Yep. When they bring up a court of law to me, I'm like, you, you look at you're already in a new different domain. You're in a totally different domain of discourse. We're talking about onus probandi, which is the burden of proof. Uh, in the legal system, is completely different than the epistemological sense. And so when they try to conflate the two, I'm automatically thinking to myself, look, you, you, you're outside the domain discourse that I'm talking about when I talk about onus probandi. I'm not talking about it in the legal sense, right? And by the way, not all countries have the presumption of innocence with, like America does, right? Yeah. Not, I mean, in America, the reason why we have a presumption of innocence yeah. is merely because it is an ethical consideration. We hold, okay, so there's a couple different ways. I know this is a tangent, Landon, but I think it's kind of important, so mm -hmm. you bear with me for a minute. Um, there's four, only four possible outcomes in any kind of judicial case, right? The two of which are considered to be um, judicial errors of some kind. Uh, one, okay, so you can have the, the innocent party being uh, found innocent, right, which is considered to be what would be a good, a good outcome. You can have the innocent party be considered gu found guilty, which is a judicial error of some kind. You can have a guilty party be found uh, guilty, which is a good outcome. And you have a guilty party being set free, which is, again, another judicial error, right? So two out of the four outcomes are judicial errors. But we have decided as a society that is a greater, more significant judicial error to have an innocent man be put in jail than a guilty man go free. That mm -hmm. is something as a society we have determined, right? There's no objective fact in the matter, I don't think, to be had there, right? It's just as a society, as Americans, we want to have the presumption of innocence because we have, find it more egregious, more of an immoral, uh, a, a moral, um, uh, what's the word? <laughs> uh, when you hate something, I guess. Uh, you know, find it more um, disagreeable sure. like this. Yeah, we, want, we, we find it more morally disagreeable to say, Hey, look, for, it shocks the conscience to have a, a innocent person go to jail than a guilty party go free, right? So that's how we do it. But that's just because that's our legal system. Um, but logic doesn't care about any of that. The logic is still the same. Yeah. In a single, you either have an innocent party go free or an innocent party doesn't go free. It, that's it. That's a binary thing. It's a dichotomy. It's, it's one or the yep. other. The logic doesn't care whether he is innocent or not. There's, that's, that's the difference, right? And so when they relate it to a onus probandi and burn a proof to... Uh, the judicial system, they're talking a completely different language. Yes. And so someone sits there and says, well, in the court of law, blah, 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 that wouldn't stand. They're, they're sort of, it's similar to saying, well, you know, in in the quilting circle, they <laughs> they sew quilts this way. I mean, it makes as much a sense for, for that. If you don't agree on your, on not only your, your common terms, but your, 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 your system, you're going to have a difficulty in, in conveying meaning yep. of that. Yeah. And, and and understanding context is, is really important. I mean, um, Iraq brought up a, a, a comment about, he said, you know, wait, uh, one plus equals 10 factorial. That reminded me, um, we had, you know, a, there was a class I took in college where the professor would, part of it was to, um, you know, take a statement and, and list out all the assumptions, list all the context. And we'd also have, we'd have exams. In fact, I remember not 10 factorial, but but the professor wrote up on the board, you know, this was the, this was, I think, I think it might have been midterm, one plus one equals 10, um, discuss. And, and, and the way it was faded, it faded as the grade is that, that, you know, if you merely said, well, one plus one equals 10, because I say so, well, that's okay. That's a system. Can I try? Very useful. Come, come up with a system by which, it, so, so you got better points by having, you know, a, a more interesting way of, of describing that. So can, please, can, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, and real succinctly. And by the way, Sean Carroll, I agree with you. Morally repugnant was a good phrase I was looking for. We find it more morally repugnant. I'm going to take that. Uh, to have the, the an innocent man go to jail than a guilty man go free. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, okay, so the way I would, I would put like 1 plus 1 equals 10. Uh, that to me, okay, just changing your base, is just saying 1 plus 1 equals 2. In that particular case, 10 is a signifier. It's a symbol that references what we would have in base 10 to be two. These are referencing the same absolute point on the real number line. So one plus one equals 10 is not saying the value of 10 in, do, in decimal. Changing bases is just like changing got, got though to cat or cat to got though. They reference the yeah. same object. 
So when we say one plus one equals ten, and it's in a different base like base two, we're 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 basically is it is exactly the same as saying one plus one equals two. It's just in this case, ten is representing two, and both of them are representing the same point in the number line. Yeah. By the way, you know, I I on the final one of the would I would I pass on that of, class? Yes, yes, sure, okay. sure, and okay. and you'd get you get Whew. you get high marks for that because. You know, the, the worst thing you could say, well, it's just because I say so, right? That's what that's what parents do when 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 it says, Mommy, how come I have to go and, and brush my teeth because I say so, right? Um, coming with a system to understand that, understand the assumptions is, is is important. I mean, one of the things in the final of this class, um, the professor put down, um, you know, pi has a last digit. Or there, there is, you know, I, I, I know what, uh, you know, uh, and, and my... And what I did was I said um, pi and base pi is 10. And there is a last digit. The last digit of, of, of pi and base pi is zero. Yeah, it terminates. Now, when people talk about, well, pi doesn't, doesn't have a last digit, what they're saying is— In base is 10, it doesn't have a last digit. Base 10, right? right? And, and it turns out that transitive numbers in an irrational base will not be repeating, will not have a, a, a last digit. Mm -hmm. um, and and so uh, you know I, I so I said pi and base pi is ten, and that ten has zero and repeating zeros after it, which is the same value as ten. And since all the digits after the one are zero, you could say that the last digit is zero. Though you could argue, and then when I say you could argue, it doesn't have a last digit because it goes on infinitely repeating. And again, that was part of the, the the class was to get you to talk about the context. So so let's I mean let's talk about this. Darth Vader exists. Um, so, Steve, do you believe that Darth Vader exists? I believe that Darth Vader does not exist, which implies that I do not believe. Now, um, what if I said, well, but but Darth Vader is a fictional character, and so he exists in stories? Okay, that's that's in the, the, under a different schema called fictionalism, right? Yes. So, I mean, if you if you again, classical logic only gets you so far. Um, this is uh, we talked about yesterday a little bit about temporal logic about uh, the, it, yeah. tomorrow this will happen like tomorrow you know I will uh, do caffeine corner that proposition is at this moment neither true or false because it is a temporal type proposition which means that is outside uh, classical logic now it is false in classical logic that statement is actually false in classical logic because it hasn't happened yet and there's a lot of problems but if you take temporal logics or multi value logics you have uh, unknown, right? So you can assign a value to that proposition of unknown because temporal, temporal logic is it gives you a little more flexibility for that, right? So if yeah. I say to tomorrow I'm going to do caffeine corner, there has to be a truth value condition to it, true or false. Um, but the the problem it gets into is it's been true in the past. True in the, if it's true in the past, present, it has to be true in the future by my metaphysical necessity. But because it hasn't happened yet, I believe in classical logic, it has to be under the false condition. Uh, but Again, this is why classical logic doesn't suit. This is why we have so many different types of logic, right? Because classical logic doesn't address a lot of things, right? Is the statement uh, yeah. the king of France is bald? Is that true or false, right? Now, in classical, it, it falls to false because there is no king of France. Um, this is Maria Russell talks about a lot of uh, ways of valuing these types of propositions. It's there. There's no mm -hmm. propositional content there actually. But uh, Darth Vader, if you want to treat it as something that exists conceptually and fictionalism allows for propositional fictions to be true, then yes, then you would say Darth Vader exists, but is, is, is a fiction. Like, for example, if I say more along the lines of properties, Darth Vader uh, is, a, is, a, um, is a Sith, right? He's a Sith. Mm -hmm. like, right. So Darth Vader is a Sith. That's a true proposition, even though there's no ontology to be had for that. There's no truth maker in reality that makes that proposition yeah. true because, one, you don't have to have truth makers for propositions under certain theories of truth. Like deflationary theory has no truth makers. Con yes. con 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 but con um, um, correspondence theory does right. So under conspiracy, yeah. uh, so correspondence theory, Darth Vader being a Sith, what's the truth maker, right? So again, you have to allow for these different types of theories. You have to allow for these different types of uh, usages and different types of logic, and you have to agree on it. And so, you agree so upon it. So you right. have a debate over whether Darth Vader exists, and and we're coming from different sets of logic. We're not going to have a very useful exchange. So, so that's another thing that's important. So, you know, when I put up my version of Darth Vader exists on the di diagram, I was essentially showing that the logic stands, right? Now, 
it's interesting that, for example, in the case of Darth Vader, if if you were to go and start to develop characters around Darth Vader, you might find, I believe the current holder of, of, of the trademark is Disney, might come after you for trademark use. Darth Vader is trademarked. I did check that. Now, you can't go to court and say, well, I'm not, you know, I'm not guilty of trademark abuse because Darth Vader isn't a real character. Right. Darth Vader is a very real fictional character. There's a whole franchise around that person. And then you go into what's real, and, right? You yes. know, it's, it's real doesn't necessarily have to mean ontology in fictionalism type states, right? Because yes. the character because, exists, because the concept exists. What, what, yeah. So what is real? What is real? So what is real, Steve? Is 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 Darth Vader real? Uh, the, 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 here's, and this is the way I describe it. There's, there's a reference and a referent. There's a concept and there's an object, right? So in the case of Darth Vader, the concept exists, right? We all, I think everybody agrees that the concept itself, even though the, the, it doesn't have an ontology, right? It's not made of matter, right? It's made of, it's just conceptual. It's abstract. We allow for concepts to, to say that they exist because there's something that we use them for. There's a usefulness for them. Uh, Quine argues this in his, in, in, for what's called mathematical Platonism. Right when he argues that he argues that sets sets exist uh, because we use them in mathematics, right? So when we say do these abstract objects exist, then in mathematical Platonism, yes, a triangle and all these things sets exist, but in nominalism, not so much the case. So when you yeah. ask me about um, Darth Vader, uh, yeah, I mean he's a real concept, but there's no reference, there's no referent that he's the reference. He does no referent to what it points to, right? A lot of people make this argument with God, right? I mean, God can yes. the concept of God. I don't think anybody really doubts exists. I mean, it would be really boring and futile to argue if there's any existence of concepts like that. I think it's whatever, <laughs> sure. But I mean, if you want to get into the whole Platonism thing, that's fine. But I mean, for the most part, in most conversations, generally speaking, people even even the hardest atheists will say yes, the concept of, of God exists, but there's no object by which it points to. They deny that objects exist, right? That's the sure. subtleties. Yeah. So, you know, so I, I said in a context, you know, I, I made a statement that I do not believe in this universe Darth Vader exists, right? And so I said I was a weak atheist with regards to the proposition of Darth Vader exists. Um, now, I also indicated that in an infinite multi-universe, I was agnostic because in an infinite multi-universe, I, I, I do not believe the proposition is true, and I do not believe the proposition is not true, right? I, I have no knowledge about an infinite multiverse as to whether or not Darth Vader exists. Yeah, and by the way... Now, I also I don't okay. even know if an infinite multiverse is even plausible, so that's another question. Uh, that, that's a thing. But, but, but that's a case where, you know, I said that I, you know, in an infinite multiverse, where if you say, well, what does it mean by that? Well, you know, in terms of infinite possibilities... Um, I'm agnostic over the existence of Darth Vader as a as a as a person. Yeah, and, and it's and by the way, see, you and I could have these conversations about knowledge, and I know what you mean by knowledge in that particular case, right? I don't even have to think twice about it. You mean it's information. I know yeah. information. Yeah. But people get confused when they hear that word knowledge, because again, words are polysemous. Knowledge <laughs> in epistemology is not used the way he just used it, right? Yes. But that's fine. He used it the way he used it. There's nothing wrong with that. That's not. That's, again, I'm a descriptivist. I understood what he means by it, and there's nothing wrong with usage of that way. So, look, I have no knowledge of the multiverse, it, but he's not u meaning it in the epistemological sense of he doesn't ha he doesn't know p. What he's saying is I don't have enough information. Yeah, I don't have information about the multiverse. So, knowledge could be used multiple different ways. There's explicit knowledge, there's tacit knowledge, there's implicit knowledge, a priori knowledge, a posteriori knowledge. Words have different meanings. This is what I'm saying. This is what I've been saying for so, years. Yes, and so you have to come up with the notion. Of, of what is your what are your terms and what is your context to begin to have an effective level of communication. Even so, even if you say we are going to <laughs> use the realm of physics and math, you still can have problems of communication, right? If the other person doesn't understand, the fault may be lie in you not being an effective communicator, as an example. So, but but let's let's talk about sort of the, this issue about. Um, the, the uncertainty, right? When I say, well, I'm uncertain about the existence of Darth Vader in an infinite multiverse. There, there are, you know, 
you can you can break down uncertainty and 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 really and again, Steve, correct me if I'm wrong here, but one of the ways to break down uncertainty is to say there's an objective and subjective uncertainty. Okay. And and with that objective certainty, you could talk about epistemological uncertainty or an ontological uncertainty. Yes. With objective, subjective, you could talk about being morals or let's say rule based stuff. The ontological, yeah, sure. Yes, and so so <laughs> when 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 someone says I'm uncertain about whether Darth Vader exists in an infinite multiverse, um, you have to be also careful because even that word uncertainty, you need to understand well what what context am I doing it based upon <laughs> you know a, a, a knowledge guided decision? Am I doing some sort of rational decision? I'm doing some rule based decision or some intuition based decision? Yeah, why? Why? Yeah, exactly. You're like, why, why? Why am I? What am I basing this on? And that's the whole point of normative morality. What? What? What am I basing on? The rules? Do I follow the rules and that makes it morally good? Do I follow God's commandments? Does that make it morally that's good? That's subjective moral. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Or or or, or <laughs> intuition saying I you know my and I would say well intuitively it seems to me that I can't I'm uncertain about the infinite multiverse mm -hmm. um, ruling out a Darth Vader. Yeah. And well, so that's an intuition decided. Decision. Yeah, let me give you a perfect example. Like Uriah put in the, uh, uh, he says, uh, he, this, this is a really good example of what we were talking about. This is why I bring it up. He says, if Tribbles do not exist, then Tribbles don't hate Klingons. Tribbles hate Klingons, so Tribbles exist. Now, that is obviously modus tollens, <laughs> right? P implies Q, not Q, not P. But as I noted, it, as, and I know, you know, Uriah knows this inside and out, that is called what's called an existential fallacy. I recognize that. I, I get it. Um, we're not going to get into the deeps of that, but it's just the, the fact that it, that is a logically valid argument, but it's invalid informally because it's an existential fallacy because okay. these these things don't even exist. These are prescribed uh, attributes that the writers have given to to like the Klingons and the Tribbles. They they don't have any real ontology, um, and so you know you, you can't just argue something into existence by attributing certain qualities to that particular or properties to that particular object so that's sure. by definition the existential fallacy so that's a good way to use by and, definition by the way if you if, if you'll see an informal problem and you go look this is what the the existential, ex existential fallacy is you've done this then you have an objective measure by which you're saying this has been committed there's something is i think prescribed there <clears throat> sure and, and so um again uh, it's a matter of, of understanding the concepts and, and the terms. Um, I think you know, one of the things I, I remember uh, a, a phrase from from because I, I I I actually audited a bunch of philosophy classes uh, in in college. I was actually too busy with other classes, but still I liked sitting in on it. And I remember one of the things that they were there was a quote by uh, they made of, of about Fred Knight, who said, "You cannot be certain about uncertainty." Right. Yeah, and, and, uh, and, and that's what I'm saying. That's, that's an example of stuff when I'm uncertain. Am I uncertain because I have some knowledge-based guided thing or some rule, like morals or, or intuition or whatever? That, that, so, even, so this is, again, where words, in particular in science, can lead you astray because you might think you're clear, saying I'm uncertain about the existence of Darth Vader in an infinite multiverse. Okay, well, let me ask you this then. Um, I, I, I had a discussion with Carrier last two weeks ago or something like that, and he was trying to, he relates everything to probabilities, right? And so he's like saying, look, there, a, a certainty of one, uh, we, we can't achieve that. And, I, and I, I'm like, wait a minute, do you, well, he didn't say a certain one. I said, look, if you, you're talking about certainty because he says we can't have certainty. And I'm like, well, uh, are you assigning certainty of one? And if not, then how close can we get to one, like the 99.99 repeating thing? How close can we yeah. get to one? Because I believe we do have certainty, right? I'm not a skeptic. I'm not, a, I'm not somebody who thinks that knowledge is unobtainable. And I do think we have epistemic certainty in some regards. Um, and, and what I mean by this, right, is that I think X plus X cannot be wrong. Now, we can be foul. I am a fallibilist, which means that our justification of why X equals X can be wrong. But... X, is, X equals X, I am certain about that. I, if, if, I don't know what it would even mean to be not be certain about that. But, I mean, how close to certainty are you then? That no. is something and, that we can't be certain about because a priori knowledge. And if you build an axiomatic system where X, where, where the identity principle was false, you would lead to yourself to a, a, a system that was absurd or, or useless. Right? Yeah, I mean, you, well, it's, it's I mean, it wasn't... 
Well, you go quicker. Even if it was para consistent, you still have the law of non con. You, you, see, you still have the law of identity. That's one of the more fundamental things. You can have. You can take away the law of exclusive middle, but you have. You have. If you have non. If you have the law of identity gone. Then how would you even begin <laughs> to have an axiomatic framework? Yes. Right? Where would you, you go from you, that? You 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 do even have Aristotle it, but it's not very that. useful. It's yeah. it's 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 a trivial, it's trivial or it's inconsistent. Certainly, yeah. it's incomplete. Yeah, so, absolutely. Um, so back to say so um, in in um, there is a definition of agnosticism that talks about that that the the and I can see if you if you agree with this def, this 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 sentence okay that. Um, the view of the existence of God or the supernatural, whatever, is unknown or unknowable. Correct. That's called the epistemological proposition of agnosticism. Yeah. Okay. Now, now um, let's talk about, you know, to me, unknown and unknowable are different. They're not the same thing. They're right. not unknown simply, means we just they're don't not, know. They're not right just now. adding a new word just to, for emphasis, right? Yes, unknown and unknowable are, are two different things. So let's discuss the difference between something that's unknown and something that's unknowable. Uh, for example, like, um, like your 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 age. Um, I I I don't know your age actually. I think I could guess, but I mean, I, I really don't know your age. But it is knowable. Something that I can't find out. I, I think you're only a few few years older than I am. <laughs> but uh, but I mean, it's knowable, right? It's something that I can yes. objectively find out, right? There is a objective fact of the matter to be had. But at this time. I don't know, but even even in the epistemological proposition of athe of agnosticism, there's what's called hard agnosticism and soft. A hard agnostic says it is unknowable. Not just we don't we don't know it; it is unknowable. The soft agnostic in the in the epistemological domain, right? Again, this is very critical yes. that people understand the difference between epistemological domain and dogmatic domain. But in the epistemological yes. domain, a, a weak agnostic would just say, "Look, I'm not claiming it's unknowable." But I am claiming that I don't know at this particular time, right? I just we or we, we can't know at this particular time. Some would argue there's some nuance there of what soft or temporal or zero data agnostic would would entail. But basically, it's a saying at this time nobody knows. That's what it's basically saying at this time nobody knows, but it might yeah. be knowable. Who, who, who so, there's so no way Steve, to determine. Do you do you subscribe <laughs> to the fact that the existence of God is unknowable? No. Or it's unknown. Unknown. I'm I'm a soft agnostic in that regard in the epistemological sense. And the reason being is this. My argument is is this. Um, I don't think it's unknown for two reasons. One, if God does exist, in theory, again, assuming that object exists, in theory, he could mm -hmm. reveal himself. I mean, that makes sense. I mean, he could do sure, that, sure, right? Sure, sure. Um, but I also maintain that we might develop some kind of a position later on where we, we got to the point like 10,000 years from now that God itself, all gods, become so much just like a mythos, just like, you know, fairies and leprechauns, I, and I agree, that is that and no, Darth Vader. <laughs> Darth Vader, that nobody on the planet believes in any longer, right? At that point, I think it's, I think it's, uh, uh, it makes sense to me at that point to say, look, these are, these are things that don't exist, right? Um, because if nobody holds the, uh, the, the proposition that God does exist, and we have gone so far to where it's considered to be a societal truth. This is what's be more along the lines was called consensus theory of truth. Um, then I'm okay with that. So I think that it is. It's, and by the way, that would be a case where we know it because the proposition would be true. We believe we believe it and we're justified. So I do believe it, it, you know years down the line we could probably say, look, I know there are no gods, but we're not at that stage yet. I don't think that we've developed a system properly in philosophy to to say that. Now people might argue against that, right? There might people say that, look, we have that system in place. I can say I know God does not exist, but I, I think that's a pretty high threshold to meet right now. That's that's well, my that's say, a subjective opinion. You could by say, the way. I believe, I speculate that God doesn't exist, but I don't yeah. know it for certain. Yes, and I think that that would be the most common thing. People notice I gesticulate with my hands when I talk. It's just it's just a habit it, I have. It, uh, but yeah, like so yeah, that. I think that's the case. Most, most atheists out there, um, well, right now a lot of them just hold to the whole. I just merely don't believe, which is. Whatever. It's just to me is I think it's silly, but whatever. But there are a lot of atheists out there. They're straight, straight out. Look, I believe that gods don't exist. I believe they're all BS. Very few atheists are out there saying, look, I know there are no gods. And if they do, they, they it's fine. I like to see their justification. I don't think I've heard one yet that really makes sense, right? Because if I ask somebody, hey, look, you you claiming knowledge, what theory of knowledge are you using? And and show me your your reason, and they say, What's the theory of knowledge? I'm really not going to take their their claim very seriously, right? I mean, and, but theists are the same way. When a theist says, "Look, I know God exists," I think they have a very, very high bar to meet as well. 
for the same exact reasons, right? Don't you? Yes. Okay. By the way, we have a con we have a a, a contribution that came in. Oh, I missed one. Uh, John Buck. Oh, John Buck. Love your stuff. Uh, go check out his channel. He says, Steve makes all the soft agnostics go hard. <laughs> you dirty boy, you. And um, of course, there's a question of it. It depends upon the context, right? The colloquial context, it means something sexual. But in this context, hard and soft have, have a very different meaning. Yeah, let, so, me, let me explain yeah, something yeah. about equivocation real quick, too, because I had someone on my Facebook say that I had an OP, a, a, you know, an original post. Um, that had an equivocation fallacy. And I was trying to explain to him, look, an equivocation fallacy is not when you use a one word a specific way throughout the whole way. Okay, just because it could be used differently doesn't make it an equivocation fallacy. Equivocation fallacy is when you use one word two different ways in the same argument. And he wasn't quite grasping that. You know, if I say light is love, love is, you know, God is love, lo God is light, something like that, that's an equivocation problem, right? Or, or something like, or, mm -hmm. you know, if I start using these words in two different ways in the same syllogism, that's an equivocation problem. But when I use the word light the same way throughout the whole argument, just because light can be used different, many different ways, um, or love can be used different ways, or God can be used in ways, whatever the word is, you know, a, a better one would be like, uh, a feather is light, God is uh, light, therefore a feather, or no, uh, God, what is it, uh, love, a feather is light, Darkness is not light, therefore God cannot be dark, or something like that. I, I don't know. But yeah, yeah. It's just whatever you, you're just mixing your terms because they're using it two different ways. That's an equivocation fallacy. And so they don't understand when to throw out a proper and form a fallacy. They, just, they think it's just a defeater. I, every day I get people accusing me, hey, Steve, you, this is a straw man. Well, what's the format for a straw man and how am I committing it? <laughs> well, I don't know. Yes. I mean, because one of the things you can go back and say, can you define what a straw man is? Yeah, or argument from authority. They, they don't understand that one. How many atheists are out there going, hey, well, if you cite somebody, that's an argument from authority fallacy. Well, no, it's not. It is a legit no. argument from authority. That is an uh, argument of uh, Mary Cundian, which is perfectly fine to do. I think because any, 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 any peer-reviewed journal, an article comes forward, it's, it is going to be rare that that article does not cite something else, does not reference something else. And that 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 peer-reviewed article that gets published with references to other things is not arguing that it's correct from authority. It's citing its authority. Yeah, correct. And it's a very different thing. And, so, and it's using it so for it support. Can't... It's not saying I'm right because X said I'm right. It's it's my argument has support to it because of these citational references, because of these expert references. This is how all debates are done, really, if you're on a college yeah. level. When you write a paper, guess what you have to do? You have to cite your sources. And you can say, look, you know, Hume, you know, ag agrees with this because this, this, and this, you know, or some physicists, this is what they say. This is what I'm arguing. They say this because of this, and they give the reasons. That's a proper citation. That's argument from authority or uh, argument at vericundium, but a proper one. And they don't distinguish between a fallacy and a proper argument from authority. They, th they hear the word uh, argument from authority, and they're like, oh, that's always a fallacy. That is wrong. Absolutely wrong. You go look. Yeah. And so when you say X, X is committing a, a, a fallacy, it's important you understand what the fallacy is, especially if you X is Steve. If you say to Steve, Steve is committing this fallacy, you better understand what it is you're, you're, you're claiming. Correct. Because Steve will probably challenge you on that. Yes. Um, it's one of those things that, that just makes Steve, Steve. Um, what I do. Um, so I guess one of the things I guess in, in this, you know, in, in this hour, it is, it is, I guess it's interesting that I mean, another thing I think that we could talk about with, with specifically with this diagram, this Boolean state diagram, is that you know we you know I stated that that when you have two Boolean variables, um, where the 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 you have the, you have four combinations that that you can have those two binary Boolean uh, values being there, but there are systems where you can have things that are neither true nor false. Yeah, there's there's different systems what we'll call truth gluts and truth gaps. Uh, truth glut is where you have uh, the uh, basically a proposition could be both true and false, and a, and a gap is where it can be is neither. Now again, these are not classical logical systems, though, right? I mean, you have to be able to to have the LEM law of the middle in classical logic. So if you take away the law of the middle and you have some kind of pair of consistent logic um, or dial theistic where you can have um, true contradictions without principle of explosion. Uh, then, yeah, you can have these truth 
gaps where a proposition is not necessarily the case to be true nor false. But this is again outside classical logic. So when La Landon, when you're talking about a proposition, these four things that come out of it, these are by necessity by classical logic. You have P, which necessitates necessitates a not P. A yes. believe you can believe the proposition or not believe the proposition, and you can also believe the proposition. Or not uh, the, or the negation, or not believe the negation. Those are the four options: believe the proposition, not believe the proposition, believe the negation, or not believe the negation. And if you believe, if you believe neither, that's the agnostic position. Yes, very simple. And again, agnostic here for agnosticism, being the psychological state of being agnostic on the proposition, is no longer in the domain of the epistemological proposition. Yeah. It is now in the dostastic yeah. domain of holding no no belief either way. So when people say, "Well, agnosticism deals with knowledge." It, it's not dealing with knowledge in this particular case. You're, you're in the wrong domain of discourse, which I keep trying to explain to people. Sure. It's like saying, look, we're talking about epistemology and you're talking about law. You're in a different domain altogether. Stop doing it, people. It's really annoying yeah. because you can go in to, to, to Stanford or IEP or any of these sources and they tell you, this is what agnostic would mean with reference to a dostastic condition. Super a context, chat. right? Yeah. It's Super a context. Chat. Super chat. Uh, Kawasa again. Thank you, buddy. 5,001. Even if it's totally a new theory, a la T-Jump, <laughs> uh, you still have to have at least one site other than other theory and justify yours by explaining why yours is better. Uh, okay, on that real quick. Okay, two things. One, um, I just watched a video by Godless Girl and T-Jump. Oh, my God. Go to, T go to Godless Girl's channel and go watch the video she just put up with him talking to T-Jump. And she pinned my comment um, because it was so bad the things that T-Jump was saying. <laughs> uh, I just, I, I, a little bit maybe died. And, and Godless Girl knows her stuff on this stuff. And she was just ringing him, going, are you kidding me? He was, he begged the question. He didn't understand fallibism. He didn't understand a Morian shift, a Morian shift that G.E. Moore did on his uh, hands. Uh, I have one, uh, here's a hand argument for against skepticism. He was totally saying like, well, reality is real because I observe it. That's begging the question. Um, he just had so many issues in his, in his understanding of, of philosophy. Uh, but, when you say that, look, you have to have a site in these a theory and have a justify yours as explaining what is better, I think that's kind of normative in science, actually, to some degree, Kwasa. But my understanding of this, again, this is, I'm going to go on a limb here. This is something that you probably can look up. I don't know. But I have always been taught in science, or my understanding is, if you have a scientific theory uh, and you, or you just prove something, you want to show something to be wrong, it is generally custom to show you have a better way of doing it. Yes, Generally if you speaking. have a competing, you have a competing theory, and people says, "Well, you know, no, uh, relativity is wrong. You should use my uh, personal theory." The the one of the things that can, you're going to be asked is, is you know, so what does your theory do? That's an improvement over relativity. Correct. What 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 can can you state things? Can you show things or predict things that relativity misses that you hit yes. right if you merely state i've just taken crossed off einstein and put my name on it and called it verbal verbal that does not make it a new theory yeah got, right? cat, to, cat versus got though yes yes um so so I, if so you look at this diagram again and what, what what steve has done um again notice what where strong shows up and, and notice we, it's the same on, on either side, because again, it's logic, right? When, you know, strong is where you believe something. You believe either the proposition or you believe that it's true or the proposition is not true. That's, that's the strong position, is a belief. Hmm? A weak position is if you don't believe something. So again, you see the weak positions are where it's not B, it's not now, and it's really now critical here, though, we, 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 we point yes. out that belief here is, um, is something being believed, right? The belief here is not a psychological belief. It is something being believed about the proposition. It is supporting the propositional content to be true or false. Yes. Now, that, that's yes. a, a critical distinction because the, the psychological state of a belief is something that's not really testable, right? If, we, if I say that um, Landon believes the sky is blue. Sure, that proposition is true or false, no question about it. But to, mm -hmm. but that's not. But that's his psychological state. Do I care that is that he believes it or not? No, that's not what we're talking about. We don't. I don't care that he believes it or not. We're talking about the belief <laughs> of a propositional state, right? If he says that he believes yeah. the sky is blue, he is saying, in essence, ostensibly, that it is the condition that 
the, the sky is blue, right? So when we're talking about beliefs, we're talking about an epistemic disposition towards the proposition here, right? And so that's very critical to, to make that distinction here. These are propositional contents. And belief, by saying, I believe it's true, you're affirming that to be the case, that that proposition is true. That is what you're saying by saying, I believe it to be the case, or just by stating it. If I say the sky is blue, there's no difference between saying the sky is blue and I, or it is true that the sky is blue, right? In deflationary theory, those would be the same exact thing. Now, there's some, we could go into really nuanced things of, of speech act theory and, and Russell's approach to saying certain things uh, autobiographically, or we're talking about a proposition. Uh, those get really complicated. Like, if I'm just talking about the proposition, the sky is blue, does that mean that I'm asserting the sky is blue? No, I'm talking about the proposition, right? So it's we have to be yes. real nuanced in some of these discussions, and that's beyond the scope of what we're going to get into. But belief here is just saying that you affirm the proposition to be true. That's all. Or false. Sure. And, and as I know, let's talk about, you know, the sky being blue. Um, you have to ask, if you're talking about it from a scientific point of view, you need to define what is blue and what do you mean by sky. Now, here, here's an example. The, the nighttime sky is blue. Yep, we just don't see it. Yeah. Because the, the property of, you know, when we say the sky is blue, what we're really talking about is, is a property of really scattering, of, of a preferential scattering or a fogging, if you will, of, of a certain frequency band mm -hmm. that we call blue. Where, where you and I, when they see that color, we both say the word blue. Now, I don't know if in your brain, you see the same blue that I see, but we agree. Whatever the that, phenomenon is, we're, we're calling it the same label. Yes, calling yeah. the same label. And, and it turns out in the nighttime sky, it's also blue. Um, so you might say the sky is blue regardless of, of, of the, the day. Well, then of course you say, well, but what if, what if instead you've got this You've got this, uh, you know, a cloud cover, and you are in a city, and you have city lights reflecting up to the cloud and coming back down. You're not going to see a blue sky. Well, that's so why there's again, a lot of conditions for these propositions. Yes, and and this is why, if you wanted to like be more specific, you just you would pick something that's non-controversial, like the triangle has three sides. There you go. That's a proposition. That proposition has always got to be true under all conditions. Yes, there yes. is no uh, there's no condition where a triangle does not have three sides, right? So yes. I use even skies. spherical geometry, yeah. it has three sides. <laughs> so I, yeah, even though it's not Euclidean, right? Um, yes. Sure, I get that. Um, so I, I, if you want, let's, let's not use the sky blue example because that way people can, like you said, throw in all these different conditions. Sure. A triangle has three sides, that's true or false. Now I don't have to believe that is true, right? I, I could say, look, I don't believe that a triangle has three sides, but I, that doesn't mean that I believe that it doesn't. By necessity, it could be that, but I have. If I say that a triangle doesn't, I I don't believe that a triangle has three sides. There are really two conditions that could be happening. One, yeah. I do hold to the negation. I believe that hey, a triangle doesn't have three sides, which obviously be kind of irrational, but whatever. Or I can hold no position either way. I can say, look, I don't know what the hell the triangle even is, right? I mean, so I don't believe that it does, and I don't believe that it doesn't. That is legit the middle position. That is the third position, the, sure. the agnostic position. That so many of these, as as as. Landon, you coined the phrase here, philosophical charlatans, uh, you know, say that don't exist, right? They're like, Steve's crazy. There's no middle position. Because what they're doing is, and this is what the, the whole gumballs and God thing that Landon reviewed was about, this, this mistake in analogy, they mistake the no middle ground between believe and, and not believe, because that is a dichotomy, right? There is no middle ground to be had there, with the, the middle ground that exists between believes P and believes not P. There is a middle ground to be had there. That is what I've been saying for how many years... <laughs> when people don't understand that and don't understand the logic, I, I, I broke it down logically as simple as I can make it, and they still say, well, there's no middle ground. Yeah. But they're not talking about the middle ground between strong atheism or weak, uh, strong atheism and strong theism. They're talking about the middle ground between believe and not believe, which nobody has ever argued there's a middle ground there for. So I get people to my page all the time. Steve, you're an idiot. There's no middle ground between belief and not belief. No kidding. No kidding. When I have you know some of these these atheist activists out there going, Steve's an idiot. He thinks there's a middle ground between believes and not believe. No, I haven't ever. No, never once. That's 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 an equivocation problem. They're equivocating yep. middle ground in one case with another, right? Yep. Now I was just say, by the way, I um, I, I uh, seeing God's auditor in the uh, hey buddy in the chat. Hi God's auditor. I I, be I believe that God's auditor 
is an excellent winemaker. He also makes uh, a, a smashing uh, a cider. Um, some point, hopefully at some point he will make a, a, more of his math is hard cider. Um, Cause that was, that was fun stuff, but, oh, but they have, they, 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 again, you're talking about somebody who is a, it was a serious wine reviewer and I really liked some of the wine that he, uh, Oh, I know um, he knows this provided. stuff. Yeah. No, God's auditor is amazing. He, like I said, he, I, I, I wasn't a big scotch fan years ago, as people may know. My dad would be drinking the Cuddy Shark or the Jameson, right? Which I'm sorry. It's not high quality oh. stuff. Cuddy Shark is crap. I, I can't stand it. <laughs> yes. But he was nice enough to send me a Johnny, a Johnny Walker black way before Christmas time. Mm. Lasted several months. Again, I'm not a big drinker. It was absolutely delicious. I was like, this is really freaking good stuff. Uh, and then he sent me a Glen Live at 12, which I still have. Again, not a big drinker. But uh, yeah, thank you for that. Because he, 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 he's like, look, I, I, based on what you've told me, let's see if you like this kind of stuff. And he knew my taste. That's what a good sommelier would do, right? Find out what kind of what yes. you like and then go from there. Like, If you like that peaty flavor, that nutty flavor, that sweet flavor. Um, and the Glen Live, it has that sweet kind of favor to it. And he knows I like wrestlings with that have been aged in, in oak barrels. Oh, delicious. Right? And, and I think, I think for example, you would like some of the grappa that's, that's, that's actually aged mm. in, in, in bourbon oh. or, 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 or oh, sherry man, stuff good. again. That sounds good. But, but again, I, I would recommend that if you're going to try these things to do it slowly, don't, don't chug, don't puzzle. If you're going to try to sample lots of stuff, um, you need a spitting cup. <laughs> Put it in your mouth, absorb no, it, I, but not I, swallow it. Dude, I got a drink, dude. I don't do the whole. I'm not refined like you. Yes, I'm yes, not refined like you. I drink this crap. Anyway, I'm not going to spit it back out. Anyway, I, that's, that's enough for. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thing. So back uh, to the line. Uh, by the way, uh, real quick, Uriah Christensen has been around since the original uh, Great Debate Community Days back on G Plus. He's been arguing the same stuff for years. He he agrees fully with us. He he knows his logic extremely well. People respect his his level of knowledge, even though he's a layperson. Uh, but he's he's been he's been saying the same thing for ages, and I think he's even a little surprised that this is even controversial. I mean, all the, after all these years, people still have controversy about this, and yet, hey, Uriah, Christian, I'll ask you directly: Have you ever seen anybody, including some very dishonest people out there, like some very dishonest lawyers out there, ever show that I'm wrong about my arguments, logically or otherwise? That's a fair question, and, and answer it very quick, uh, very uh, honestly. I want to hear his answer on it because I I know it never happened. Yeah. By the way, I also see Misha is out there. Yes, Dr. Griffith. Nice to we, see her. Yes. We had a wonderful time talking about who and and and, and so forth. And and you know, everything from, from Roman days up to now. And and we need to have another discussion about Cold War, because I I learned that she's actually an expert uh, Cold, in Cold War uh, yeah. era. She's her she's obviously a, a, a expert PhD in her in history. And I think her, her concentration was the Cold War era, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, and so and so ha having having participated in the Cold War, it'd be interesting to have that 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 I'm looking for that discussion. And, and by the way, when you say that there there is some confidential classified stuff that you're referring to, I assume, <laughs> possibly maybe. I can either confirm or deny any information regarding classified information. And I, 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 I still do that. I can either confirm or deny any information regarding X. Right? You're supposed to say it in a metered way that's that's clear that you're yeah. not i can either confirm i right, let's 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 let's, let's throw, we'll, we'll get back to logic but let me throw this out the live chat see if anybody knows this there's a very specific name that this response is called you know that there's there's did landon freeze on me wave landon no no oh, okay. i'm, so, I'm right. still here so there's a very specific name that this is called let's let, let's ask the live chat if they actually know what this actual that actual response i can neither can neither, neither confirm nor deny that what the pro, the pro, there's a proper name response for that. Let's see if they know what it is. And, I like, and, I like and, throwing these and, testing questions out. They and and before you can get a certain clearance, one of the classes you have to, to pass is to is to utter this phrase and utter the phrase properly. In fact, your phrase is measured. And inflections. They're actually yeah, the inflections. System, yeah. They, they look at the inflection because again, you can't say I can either confirm or deny or whatever. Or, I mean, yeah, yeah. I can either confirm. You know. Uh, <laughs> It's like you can't. it's like it's like when you have a, a White House press conference person, you know, saying <laughs> basically saying, uh, "I'm not going to lie to you," <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, something along those lines. Uh, be, by the way, uh, uh, Uriah did say that no, he has not seen anybody, including dishonest lawyers out there, showing my logic is wrong. They've they've literally lied to people about it, and missed. They I I haven't watched somebody's latest stuff, but I do have people talk to me. Um, basically, taking snippets out from an old hangout that I had. Just trying to make an argument that somehow I argue that 
either atheist or, or uh, rocks or atheist or uh, rocks or agnostic. I, I don't know one or the other. He's done both years ago. But this was an internal critique that I was doing from his system, showing that would be the end result. Um, and I didn't agree with it, right? I, I've never argued that rocks are atheists. I think that bionic stance's argument is just nonsense. And I've certainly never argued that it rocks are agnostic. Because what is the condition for agnosticism? You have to be able to evaluate the proposition and suspend judgment, right? This is, I mean, you could read Suspending Judgment by Dr. Jane Freeman, New York University. This is, this is something that, that she talks about as well. There's a condition. Yeah. For the epistemic state of being agnostic. Now, my theist position is a little bit different. Let me let me run over this real quick with you, Landon, because this has been thrown out there. Sure. Um, this may have brought up to my attention the other day, and I'd explain it to them. Um, if I start from first principles, okay, from the law of non-contradiction, I have basically the negation of the quantity P versus Q, which is if you do the, the work out of you get um, basically P or not P, which is the law of excluded middle. That has to be a tautology. Mm -hmm. okay? So when I say P or not P, and you have a triple bar T. That with, is within a certain with a, with, within a, a a a Boolean context. Boolean right? classical logic context. Yes. yes. So yes. P or not yes. P. When I say P or not P, is, and I use triple bars T, that means it's, that is a tautology. That is true. Mm -hmm. Has to be the case. So if I instantiate that with the word theist, then I get theist or not theist. Would you agree? Sure. Everything that's not in the set of theist must must exist in part of the universal set. Be in the complementary set of not theist. Would you agree with that? Yes. Yes. And 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 a by and and by and basic, uh, by yeah by 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 a uh, system. Yes. Yes. And glamorization. Yes, Baki. I, I don't know if you're the first person to get it right. That is the glas glamour, uh, gl glomer uh, response. Very good. Glomer. Well, I know. We'll talk about after. Well, I'll, yeah. I'll talk about that after. But finish right. finish your statement. Then All I'll right. talk so about glomer. if it's by logic that you can prove by first principles that everything exists, everything that exists in the universe as a universal set. That you're theist and not theist as the complementary sets. So you would have a like a prime u uh, slash backslash uh, a means that any element that is not an a prime must be an a, and any element not an a must be an a prime. They're mutually exclusive and jointly exhaustive. Again, mm -hmm. logic. Now, my argument has been this: very simple. If you want to call the non-theist position non-theist, I'm okay with that merely because I know what you mean by that. Because non and not are syn synonymous. In logic, yes. I mean, I don't see a difference. But the, the, the positions that are not theist are not theist, theist right? Right. Yes. Now, if and, you want, and the combination of theist and non-theist is everything. Correct, and so and and they are and and there's no intersection. Yeah, there's no intersection at all. They're mutually exclusive. So here's the thing: if somebody uses the word non-theist to mean a very specific group, like a person's, must be non-theist because they're holding to they're not they're not theist. That's fine. These words again. Polysemous. I just have to know what you're talking about, right? So if you use non-theist to mean a group of people, and you're saying, look, rocks can't have positions, they don't have any position either way, they can't be non-theist or the theist, I, I don't care, that's fine, whatever. You can use non-theist in that way. But you also have to allow for the fact that non-theist used it differently to mean basically the same exact thing as not-theist, because I don't see a difference. Now, rocks are not theist, right? Or non-theist. I, I have no problem with you arguing like that. I just have to know what domain, you, you know, while you're using the word, Right, but there's a huge difference between that and saying non uh, non theist equals atheist. Now you've got a problem. Yes, because atheism logically cannot be derived to mean not theist. It it just it doesn't yes. work that way. That is an arbitrary, stipulative, capricious even uh, conceptual dichotomy. So the equivocating yeah. anti theist with atheist is also a, well. A, Richard, a yeah, problem. Richard Richardson does that all the time. He he maintains that anti theism is strong. Atheism, that's the synonymous things. I don't, now I've heard people use it that way. Even IEP, I think, mentions it. But that's certainly not normative by any stretch of imagination. But here's, but again, mm -hmm. going back to the first principles, I'm okay with saying rocks are not, are non-theist because non-theist basically means the same exact thing as saying you're not in the group of theist, period, whatever it is. Now, if you want to make it an epistemic thing and say, look, I'm going to use non-theist to mean just a group of people for demographics that are people that are not theist, I'm okay with that as well. Guess what? Words have usages. There's no category error there. So anybody who says that I have a category error by saying that rocks are not theist or non-theist, they're just simply wrong. Would you agree? Yes. Okay. Now, yeah. again, I'm not saying I'm right because Landon agrees with me. I'm saying that there's a, probably the case that I have an expert in logic, especially Boolean logic, that is saying there's no category error to be had here at all. It's just a matter yeah. of, of a complementary set from a universal set, which is standard set theory. Sure. Oh, you're right. So he was going to get it. Oh, wait, Araya's going to eat a taco, and we're saying about logic. We're, you know, who's got the better deal here? 
I have some, I have some almonds, oh, and and I've, I've got. I'm going to switch over to a, a Cabernet Sauvignon. Oh, pretty soon. I got um, some Cabernet so, in the fridge, actually. Yeah. So what we have is great, lower response. Um, so that that term came about because the Hughes Goldmar Explorer was used allegedly to salvage a sunken Soviet submarine, and and they they made a claim. That it was, you know, that, that they attempted, but that the sub broke into pieces and they failed to retrieve it. And and the response back was that the CIA chose to neither confirm nor deny the project's existence. Mm -hmm. um, and and so because it was the, you know, USNS Hughes Glomar Explorer, it was it was deemed the Glomar response. Now this is not. We're not saying that the global response came about in this first use was in this uh, Hughes thing, and that was like 1975. Um, that that expression had been used actually for quite a long time, and um, but it was it was publicly named global response because of the CIA's denial. By the way, um, you know the you know the first uh, the first uh, tweet that the CIA. Um, had in his Twitter account was? What? We can neither confirm nor deny this is our first tweet. Oh, that makes sense. I like that, actually. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and you think about that, let's bring it back to logic, right? Yeah. They are they 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 are not saying that that's the first time the CIA tweeted. They're just the cat They're confirming or not. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, again, that's brilliant. This, that's brilliant, actually. Yeah, no, that's good. Um, but go back to the logic uh, real quick. Like I, I want to say, like Apple and not Apple. You can say, look, it's mm -hmm. a non-Apple, right? What what is my cup here? It's it's a non-Apple. It, it doesn't have to think about it, right? There's no. It's just a condition of set theory, right? There's no consciousness that needs mm -hmm. to be evaluating that, right? Now, if you want to call this atheist, that's a little different, right? If you want to say, look, this is atheist. To me, that's a that's a that's an actual position, right? That is something that requires conscious thought. And and if you want to argue, by the way, I will say this on record. By this dance. Believe it or not, her logic is not wrong on this. Um, she is actually correct. If you use her types of terminology, then logically it does follow that rocks are atheist, right? This is why she says, yeah, love, yeah, <laughs> yes, rocks are atheist. She, I've never said her logic is wrong on that. If you use her usages, it does follow by necessity. I've argued the same if he thing. Use her, if, if you use her terms you use her in her context, yes. it is self-consistent. It is self-consistent. I've never argued otherwise. But, but but let's you know, maybe be sure that that being self consistent does not mean that you're useful. Right, it just means her axioms mean are, I think have problems. That 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 it that it is has has substantial value, right? Right. Because self consistent systems can be can actually be contradictory. Yeah. They can be incomplete. You know, again, right. incomplete or consistent or trivial. Yeah, but because if I want to say, hey, I mean, how many non-theists are there in America? I don't want, I'm not, I'm obviously not talking about my cup here. I'm talking about demographic, right? So in that particular case, non-theist yep. is used very specifically. Atheism could be used the same way, right? If you want to say rocks are, are atheist, I mean, do you want to count all rocks as atheists? Probably not. Or, or you would want to maintain that atheism is a demographic, right? And I get that, right? I, I, I'm okay with that. But do you want, do you still want us to think, do you even want it out there that yes, rocks are atheist? I, to me, to be in the same set, even because uh, whether my cup is as a non-theist or not, it's still in the set of all things not theist, right? Yes. So an atheist is, to be in the set of all things not theist um, presents some problems. Do you do you do you want to be in the same set as a rock? I I don't think it's a really rash. Well, I'm not going to use the word rational. It's not a good utility argument, right? Yes. And so not useful. Not useful. But if you want to argue that rocks are atheist, I think it's silly. I think it's at least I think it's an absurd comment myself. Is it lo illogical? Not based upon her axioms. It would be illogical from the axioms I use, though. It just it doesn't so, make sense. Yeah. So uh, I guess one of the things is that that where do you think um, belief? And I will make this 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 question perfectly vague, yeah. um, explicitly vague. Where do you think belief uh, fits within the scientific process? Well, see, a lot of people think belief just means accept something without evidence, right? And that's completely wrong, right? It's not. <laughs> yeah. It's not what belief is. Exactly. Yeah. It's not, exactly. Not, not, not what it is by any stretch of imagination. Let's oh, be realistic. Colloquially, colloquially, that's a common. That's a common use. The parlance commonly uses that way. But. Yeah, but that's. It's not normative, and this. This is the case even in science. Look, scientists have beliefs. 
If they did it, they wouldn't be doing the experiment. They believe that their hypothesis is more the correct one. I mean, how many scientists, let's be honest here, okay? How many science says, scientists say, look, I'm going to do this huge experiment, but I don't believe my hypothesis is correct. Now, would it be inconsistent for them to do that, right? It may be a performance contradiction at best, but there's no logical inconsistency there. But how many, how many people, how many scientists are going to do a whole experiment and write a research paper and not believe that they're, they're correct about it? That seems pretty silly, does it not? Yeah, I mean, unless, of course, they are surprised by the results and they're publishing a negative result. Okay, that's fine. Um, but they believe something, and they believe it. It's not because of the evidence per se. It doesn't necessarily have to be the case. People do believe things because of evidence, but they might have other reasons to believe something. It could be potential reasons. Could sure. Be pragmatic reasons. There are not more than just evidentialism out there. But science, they, they have beliefs. Of course they do. But they have, they have but, but the, justified and rational beliefs is the key, though. But that, but, that, but that word belief has many different meanings. Yes. That's one of the things that, 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 that people like Kent or G-Man try to do is say, well, do you believe? No, I don't believe. Well, and then they go and they basically change the definition of belief. You answer one, 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 you answer with one definition of belief and they come at you with another definition of belief. Yeah, that's, that's when equivocation comes in though, right? You know, um, if I'm talking about but, belief with the epistemologist and somebody comes in and says, well, belief is just, you know, blind faith on something that has no evidence. They're not talking about the same stuff any longer, right? We're not talking about the same. Yeah. Uh, so, wait, 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 Dr. Griffith says, please go ahead. Uh, Steve, Popper insisted that the scientists should be trying to demonstrate the hypothesis. Um, in some regards, yes, but also... Disprove, disprove. But, 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 but disprove. What Popper was trying to say is, look, he thought there's more value in having a falsification criteria in hypothesis to demonstrate, let's try to disprove it, right? Now, not all scientists agree with falsificationism. Let's get that straight. Falsificationism is not something set in stone in science. I think, though, a falsification condition makes the theory stronger, though, but it's not required. It isn't. But I do think yeah. that if you have a science, which you, as Misha knows full well, and, and you do, but other people not understand this, when you do an experiment, what you're trying to do is basically falsify your own conclusion. If you can't, you, you reject the null, and then you accept that the hypothesis is more likely a better explanation. That's yes. it. More likely. Not is. Right? I don't think okay, any paper the out there would get away with that. not saying you, you've proven it. Right. P-value says it's more likely. Right. No, it's no it's paper it's out there it. says, look, we are correct, and it has been proven based upon our P-value, blah, blah, blah. No, that's not what they say. We, they, what they say in the conclusion is we believe it is more likely the case. Blah, blah, blah. Highly certain. Or, hi, or highly you know, certain or highly High signal or highly whatever. Agree. Yeah. But they don't use language like we are absolutely correct because reason this reason. They, you just don't see that. I, I mean. Yes. Yeah. And, and I think, again, um, you know, uh, you know, that's what you know was was a phrase that Pauli, uh, a, a brilliant theoretical physicist, you know, referred when when he talked about something in the in the more pejorative sense, he would use a phrase saying it's not even wrong. Yeah, right. So you made a statement and it's not even wrong, right? That your statement is not even falsifiable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and for, and for it, scientific theory, it makes it a stronger scientific theory. But there is no you you can't find something that says, look, to have a to have a scientific theory, it must have a falsification criteria. I've never seen anything of the case. As a matter of fact, there are scientists out there that reject Popper's uh, falsificationism. Right. Yes. Now, um, in in you know one of the things in in a you know I talk about the, the, my my taxi cab experiences in, in traveling someplace, and and you know I like to talk with the person driving and. And, and so forth, or, or, or let's say um, using Lyft or something like that. And, and it, it, is, it usually is to say, well, you know, um, come back and say, well, I'm an astronomer, a planetary scientist. And, and invariably what comes back is a question of the form, do you believe in extraterrestrials? Mm -hmm. right? And they want to know. They're asking it not as a gotcha type thing. They're not like this, this I'm going to see if I can get you on it. But they ask, you know, do you believe in extraterrestrials? And, and what I try to do with that, and so first of all, what do you think they mean when someone says, do you believe in extraterrestrials? Well, the, think I, 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 think, I think generally most people are gonna be trying to play a gotcha, like you believe that we have UFOs and eat little green men. Uh, yes, so, so there's some people who are, you know, there's a conspiracy to, to you know, Area 51. Blah, right, blah, 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 yeah, blah, reptilians, I think that's, you know, but they're trying to give a gotcha, right? A Antarctica, big blah, 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 you know, and, and so... Well, that uh, one's true. Way, Antarctica is walled off. And penguins do guard it with AK-47s. You've been there. You've seen it, so... <laughs> uh, 
Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's what I think yeah, they mean know, by that. But if they say, look, if they say, look, do you believe it, uh, that are, there is alien life in the universe, or do you believe that there is intelligent life in the universe, or do you believe that there's any kind of life in the universe? Those are very distinctly different questions in some regards. But 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 it is but it is but what I try to do with that question is I try to help them understand what is they're asking, because if yes. I say yes or no, I am doing them a disservice. So there's needs, there needs to be a new show out there, I guess, Landon. Uh, Dr. Zaya says, Taxi Cab Confessions, Landon Kurt Noll Edition. Oh, my FG, I would watch that. That's that. <laughs> I'm telling you, that, that would be. We killer. had some really interesting discussions in Taxi Cabs. I bet um, you did. Particularly some interesting discussions in Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe and Taxi Cabs are interesting. Are interesting. So, in your, interesting in, your, ride. In, your, in your life travels, have you ever come across a reptilian, alien form, human? No, okay. I have come across people who, who state categorically that they exist. Hmm. I di I disagree. <laughs> I, mean, I disagree and, that they and, exist. Rather than I disagree yeah, that you. Yeah. Have, I believe that you have come across across <laughs> those people. So, again, and, clarification. And and and, and, and with, with 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 further blatherings, they their 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 evidence was that they they have seen them so many times in their dreams they have to be true. That sounds like a nephew argument. <laughs> So, so, but, but I think, you know, when, when someone says, do you believe extraterrestrials are, are, are true? What I, what I first of all try to say is, is, do you think that whether I believe or disbelieve aliens exist has any bearing on whether they exist or not? No. I mean, what, 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 why, why? Beliefs have I no, said, you, you, no. Done. beliefs have no, beliefs don't change states of the universe, but there are some yeah, things. Oh, God. And try not to be a mean person. I say I find it interesting you word believe, because whether aliens exist or not is kind of like immaterial whether I believe them or not. Yeah, absolutely. One's the, one's a state of affairs; the other one's a, a, a disposition towards that. Now there are some things I explained this the other day. Um, there are some things that are that do change the state of affairs of the universe. There are some things that if I uh, so, uh, certain people utter <laughs> these are called speech act theories, called declaratives. That if they do this, it does change reality. Words can change reality, which is a hard concept for people to wrap their head around. They're like, well, how does a word change reality, right? That makes no sense. Because, you know, I hear I'm a person that says, like, words are not violence, right? But then at the same, seemingly disconnected to that, uh, it seems to be the case where I'm saying, well, wait, how can words not be violent, yet, yet they can have some effect on something? How can they change reality? Because sure. words are not violence, but declaratives in speech track theory do change reality. A declarative would sure. be such a case of, again, a, a minister or a priest saying, I now pronounce you man and wife. If they have the authority to do that, it has changed the state of affairs that now you have a married couple. So now the proposition yes. has changed. Are these people married? No, it's false. After he announces that, after he says it, after his words change reality, yeah. that proposition now becomes true. It has changed the state of affairs. That yeah. That's hard and, for and, people to wrap their head and, around. And if you're being really pedantic, what you say is that the state now recognizes that they are married, but that the state recognition did not declare them to be married. They were married, and they simply had the state declare that they were. Well, the the, the pastor declared it, and the state recognized it. I would, I would say. Or or officially, and I, I the official, and, yeah. and when it became you know mayor pro tem, I actually had the power to to declare people to be married, be married. And because you were given that authority would, to change the state yes. of affairs. And, yeah. and, and I would, I would, you know, in, in talking with the people, I would say, you know, my act when I come out and we'll do the nice ceremony because you like the ceremony and stuff. And I say, and I'll declare you to be husband and husband or husband and wife or wife and wife. Um, that, that might, by stating that is merely that the state is recognizing it yep. and you can go on your taxes and so forth. But, but, you're married already. You're just merely asking the state to recognize it. Oh, I don't know. Well, I, I might disagree and, with and that. That's, that's what I would say. But yeah. back, back to the thing about but with the, with the taxi cab thing, and then do you believe in extraterrestrial? So, so I would, I to to not be mean, I try to say it's interesting that you use the word belief because you know aliens exist or not exist. Do you do you agree? Yeah, that's all. Yeah, and they usually has to be one or the other, say, right? Well, you know, it, it, it's just true that that they either exist or they don't. Right, exist. That, 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 I believe that that is a ontological fact. Yeah, that it, that is a and, tautology that it must be the case. But you some, don't, right? We sometimes have to get them over because if they're like really a true believer or a true non-believer, then that they, they 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 it's hard for them to accept it. But when you when they 
when they hear that you're saying you know, it's 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 either the case it is or isn't. So my my belief has nothing to do with the bearing so, whether it exists or not. What do you do when you have somebody um, like the other day when I say look I'll use aliens for example so they're like a like a triggered thing, but I say look. It is either the case that aliens exist or you, it does, they don't. It is either the case you believe that you don't. These are all dichotomies. And when somebody says, mm-hmm. well, I, I don't know if I believe or don't believe, I, I find that to be a state of irrationality. And the reason being is, if you're not convinced there are aliens, then you don't believe. It's simple as that. If you can't, if I say, can you tell me aliens exist? And they say no, then you're not convinced. You, you, does, does it, why, do I put the, why do these people put themselves in a state of irrationality to avoid having to answer very simple questions is very telling. Sure. Right, because look, well, unless you unless you came out of a coma and 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 weren't really sure about reality, um, and were kind of confused, but so that's a state of irrationality, right? And this is why we have other yes. logics to deal with this, by the way. But if you <laughs> yeah. if, if you cannot so, tell me you're you're convinced aliens exist, you don't. Simple as that. So I ended up what I ended up doing with the ride is I, I I then state, you know, as a planetary scientist and da da da, the data that we are seeing. Um, leads me to conclude that I would be very surprised if we were alone in the universe. Yeah, I agree. So I, I try to say, and, and, and I say, and, and why this, what, what kind of data we're talking about? And I go through the explanation that I said, again, I keep, because if they, they, if they're, if they're, if they have the attention span of a tweet, I have to keep them back to say, you know, I, what I'm saying is that the data support that I would be surprised if it turned out that we were alone in the universe. Um, Very much so, because yeah. of blah, 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 right? Um, and so that's why I say that data leads me to believe, and I try to avoid the statement, I believe in extraterrestrials, because my stating that, the words I use and the words they're hearing have different, oftentimes different meanings. I agree. And I, um, we got to get back to this diagram group. We're, we're already at 90 minutes, so I'd like to to get back to this diagram a little bit. Um, sure. But also, I'll, I'll shill a little bit out there. Uh, look, if you like this kind of content, we'll be doing a lot more of it on this channel. Plus, you know, I have the other channel. Um, join and become a member of the join button. Uh, it makes a difference. I know it's, it's tough out there over, but, uh, you know, I'm trying to get content out there. I'm trying to keep up with being entertaining and educational. And if you like that kind of stuff, you know, and you also get a cool green name if you become a member. Um, you know, and plus on Patreon, the, my Patreons are my lifeblood, and I appreciate everybody that becomes a Patreon. Whether it's two dollars, five dollars, I've seen twenty five. It lands as a Patreon. I'm, I'm a Patreon. Yeah, it doesn't matter whether it's one dollar or fifty dollars. Uh, I, I have a Patreon. I have. I do appreciate. Now, I, I, again, the people that are giving twenty five dollars a month to me and fifty, or I think I have fifty or two. I think I might even have a hundred. I'm not sure, but those I, I can't express to you how much these things mean to me. Um, because this is what I I do. This is my full time thing. I want to be entertaining. I want to be educational. I want to bring on guests, which I've got people lined up. Uh, we have these discussions, and so if you if you like the content, become a member. I, I, I again, I don't show enough for me, but I know Landon is a huge fan. He helped me get some equipment. I mean, yep. I love this stuff, and uh, I can't thank him enough for that. But I wanted to get back by having Landon on and have these discussions and people being educated by it, and at the same time entertained. So that's my show. And again, and I will say as well, if if you know, you, it's important for you to support the content creators that are providing value to you. So if this is something that you found interesting or intriguing, um, you know, by you helping support. And support can be something as simple as you click that like button so that the- And share. The, yeah. and, and share it and, and, and so forth. Um, share it with your friends, your landlords, your, your, your ex-spouses, whatever it's um, Sharing it helps, liking it helps. As well as as you know, uh, and and encourage other people to to consider the content. And if you have additional appreciation, like we've seen people in the super chat that contribute stuff, it is it is quite yeah. Because I don't helpful. make money off and the video finally, themselves because the they get on ongoing basis as well. Yeah. So, but Thank again, you. it's it's really important for this economy that if you find content you like, to Show that appreciation. Yeah, let me tell you what happens Please because do. almost all my videos get demonetized any longer. I'd say about half of them are not. Fifty to seventy percent get demonetized right off the bat. Then I got to go and I do a review. Out of those, half of those get reinstated, right? So, and by that time they're already watched, right? I mean, so it's we're not. I'm not making money off the videos themselves. It's just if I make a dollar or two off a video, that's pretty normative. Um, it's not a large amount of money. It's about a dollar. Okay, so nobody's getting rich off this. Um, mm. But uh, that's only because, again, people have already watched it. They're not going to go back and watch the old stuff. So 
it, it, by the time it gets reviewed, and by now they're having an algorithm do it, not even humans any longer. Uh, it has been faster, by the way. I will know if they've gotten better at it, but it still has to go through that review process, and by then, it, who's going to watch the video except for stragglers, right? So most of my things that I watched, uh, people watch mine are the same day or live, right? Usually within the first 48 hours. Uh, but anyways, let's get back to this diagram real quick. First of all, uh, Landon, you helped me with the legend here. We basically, we spent hours making sure this legend was, t was top yeah. notch, right? Yes. Okay, so do you, as a person who knows Boolean logic, right off the bat, I mean, do, do you see anything wrong with the Venn diagram? I mean, no, uh, it, it, is, it is logical. It's okay. perfectly logical. So why do I have somebody on like that I debated ages ago for, for since I put out this out there and, and from last year, still trying to say that this is wrong, and yet they have people have told him what's wrong about it. Uh, they're just they're not well, understanding why he thinks anything's wrong with this because he hasn't explained it using logic. Some people that have put themselves out publicly in a in a in in a position they read as illogical have to fight against that notion that they're publicly illogical. And so they will then try to equivocate and do whatever that they can to see, well, do you disbelieve Steve because of this? Do you disbelieve Steve because of that? Because they want to hold on to their public position. Um, let me give you a, a really important life lesson. Ooh, I like that. Land is, Land is Life Lessons. That's another good show. When when someone shows you are wrong, they are actually providing you a service, and you should thank them for it, um, as opposed to resist that. Right? That yeah. that's really is the case of, of of and another thing is that it's also okay for you to say I don't know. That does not mean you're ignorant. It means that you're not stupid. Yeah. And let me throw this out there as well. By the way, I guess we have a new patron. So thank you, Onslaught Revolver. Very much appreciated. Oh, thank I don't, you, thank I, you, thank I, you. Thank I, you. I, don't have my, I don't have my email open right now because I am, I'm using Google Meets and I'm using it through a different account. And so I don't have my main email open. So I'm not getting notifications if you do become a patron right now. I, I do apologize. But thank you. Thank you for that. Um, and by the way, as Zeshi points out, my buddy Zeshi, uh, look, become a member and you know join the cult. You know, you know, because I get, I, I, <laughs> hey, look, man, if you want to put me in a cult leader, I'm okay with that. The only problem is I have no idea what shoes to wear. And I don't, for some reason, I don't have this big harem that I'm supposed to have. I mean, Kim Jong Un has 2,000 women at disposal, I guess. I mean, I being gypped, I'm like the worst cult leader of all time. I, I, I'm telling you. But whatever. Some cult leaders are more efficient than others. I guess so, man. I need to designate more, I guess. Um, but uh, somebody had to ask, and this is a great question what is bullying logic? That's right up your alley. Well, I mean, one of the things in particular is that that there was a uh, you know the, the the history of Boolean logic actually comes from a um, it was it was actually was was perfected in the late nineteenth century, but it actually comes from um, there's a whole algebra of surrounding it and and Boolean logic really is a branch of is as a branch of algebra. So so it's, it's, it's a symbolic mathematical system. Where, where the values have, the variables have a state of either true or false, like you know one or zero, right? And and so instead of 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 variables having, you know, a, a, a integer like three, four, five, a variable is either true or false, and that's that's it. And the question is, well, what can you do from from these things? There there are there are operators for these variables. Um, and we call them, you know, the, the conjunction, disjunction, negation, right? So you can have two things anded, or two things ORed, or something negated, and and that becomes the basis of which it it is there. In fact, in computer systems, um, at a, at a high level, the the circuitry is emulating Boolean logic, right? And and Claude Shannon was somebody who um, applied. Um, rules of uh, Boolean stuff about how when you add two things together or or things together or invert something, those basic operations, what you can do with it. Uh, and, and they showed in fact that that you know he he simulated sort of of, of what's called a switching algebra to to have a bunch of electronic circuits that you can perform operations, test, perform Boolean systems. Now it turns out underneath 
when you look at the physics of what's going on in an electronic circuit, you have a bunch of analog stuff. You have a bunch of things resolving. But but from the point of view of the of the of a computer going through logic states, a computer is performing Boolean operations. You have you have operators that do and or XOR so for other other operators are basically compound operators. Yeah. But but the three federal things are A and B, A or B, or not A. That's the and from that you have rules mm. about associativity, commutativity, distribution, identity. Um, you know, the, the inverters, all that sort of stuff is it comes comes into play. So let me, and oh, so yeah, and so that's what that you know, your computer you're using is using effectively at, at 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 some level Boolean logic to perform operations. Yeah. So let, let me uh, let me get even simpler than that. Um, look, if, uh, uh, proposition is true or false, and Boolean is zero and one. Right, so a Boolean, you don't have point five. I mean, you, it's either zero or one. It's a state of affairs that the proposition, you know, is is a zero, which means it's false, or, or one that is true. That's it. I mean, mm -hmm. and then all these connectors and all these disjunctions and all these things, they're they're the same in, in propositional logic as they would be in Boolean logic, right? Now, in other types of logic, it they describe things a little bit differently, right? For example, um, uh, let's say uh, dosastic logic, it has that predicate the B here, right? Right. And if you have uh, yes. something like a deontic logic, right? Deontic logic would be something along the lines of you to use, um, I think it's O, it means obligatory, uh, P is permissible, F is forbidden. Okay, so if I yes. have the, the, the uh, operator F, X, that means it is forbidden to be the case, or it is permitted. Uh, modal op operators would be that square that I use, right? That means yeah. necessary. Uh, the triangle, the little diamond shape, that means it's possible. These all are operators. But the logic itself is still based upon the principle of valence. The proposition is either true or false. It's either zero or one. Most of these logics are based on a Boolean axiomatic system, would you say? Yes. And, and you know, even to the prepositional calculus is all based upon, upon a Boolean or you know, zero or logic. Yeah. Now, if you get to multi-valued um, logic, no, you're no longer Boolean. Yeah, because, because if you sit there and say, all right, I've got, a, a, if you construct a, a, an AND gate, um, what you'll find is that as you raise voltages on on the two inputs, um, the the output will vary, and at some point you typically have you know in an electronic circuit you have a clock system that sits there and says it's going to take this long for the gate to to come to a stable state, mm -hmm. and and so the way that, that your computer works is they have a clock. You know, talking about you know how many gigahertz your thing is. That's really that's really a metronome saying, okay, at this point, we're going to measure all the Boolean circuits and, and take their truth value. Yeah, and, and that's why you have temporal logic, because if, if you have the state of a, of a computer, right? You have P, which means uh, it was the case. It was, means it's past tense, right? It was the case, mm -hmm. so use the P. Uh, if you use H, it, is, um, it has always been the case. Always has been in the past yes. case. If you use uh, F, that means it always will be the case. And if you use uh, G, it means it is the case. Or no, no, wait. Yes. No, F, F will be, it will be the case, and G will be, it will always be the case. And so these are temporal predicates, right? So if I say F of X in this particular case in temporal logic, I am saying it will be the case in the future, right? That's what the F is for. So F yes. is, it will be the case. So if you're writing a computer type thing and you want to know what's the state will be ahead of time, right? This is why classical logic falls down on this. You have to use a, a temporal logic system using it will be the case, um, that this is going to be the state, of, you know, in some whatever the whatever the proposition is going to be for the, the computer state. This is why you use yes. these other forms of logic. Yes, and and so and something like you know a camera, digital camera has you know a, 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 with a CCD, you have photons that are striking a surface and kicking out electrons, and what when 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 the camera goes to try to measure how bright something is, what the camera does is it looks at a it looks at a well that it filled up with electrons exposes it by the shutter and the the light comes in and bounces you know knocks off electrons and then it measures the the remaining charge through a through a and it goes through what's called an a to d converter where it'll sit there and say wow this this cell dropped 25 percent of its charge so we're going to say that it's its brightness is 25 percent from a, between black and and, and white if you're talking about a sensor, or you have a you have a red you have a red filter, and when you measure it, you've lost 25% of the charge. Mm -hmm. They'll say it's 25% red. So it'll send out digitally this thing saying, but maybe if you're if you're if you're 
your ability to measure is eight bits, it'll say it's red for a value of 64, where zero would be black and 255 would be fuzzy. It sounds like almost like fuzzy logic in some ways. Yeah. And so those are things where where that's examples of, but, but again, it's oftentimes where in these digital circuits, you're taking these analog systems and resolving it to digital. Now, there, there's, a, there's a common fallacy of people say, well, what's it underneath, right? Is, is, is you, know, you could say, well, underneath the digital circuit is analog stuff, right? It's, it's, it's either electrons or holes moving forward. And, 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 and to, 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 you know, Steve likes holes. Uh, the, the notion of, of current big holes. And, you know, if, if we had okay. a, if you had to do it all over again, um, you know, electrons would be positive charge or the negative charge, but. Yeah, I think that's, that's a fundamental problem from electronics from the beginning that they, they got it kind of wrong. It's just, it's just been the norm ever since. Cause you know, I grew yes. up thinking, look, electrons, I thought of, I, I did. I mean, I thought of a wire, then you have electrons flowing through it like water. That was the analogy we used for God knows how long. But of course, we all know if you ever study actual electronics, that's completely BS. That's not how it works. Well, electrons do not travel through a wire like it does, like water. It's just a functional analogy we can use because the math happens to be pretty similar, if not ex almost exactly the same. Sure. Uh, at least analogy-wise, you can use uh, the flow either way, but it's not actually not electrons. It actually is electron jumping from here to here, but then it doesn't jump any further. And what you have is a progressive flow of, of, of missing electrons, the whole in the yes. in the in the valence shells of the material, that's what's actually flowing, right? Yes. It's more and like, so, some ways would yeah, say yeah. instead of saying the electrons flow forward, it's the it's the holes are flowing back. And the flow and the and the and the, of course the hole has no ontology really. It's, it's actually something missing. So is anything really moving in the wire? No, not really. Yeah. No. And and that that tends so so um and in terms of the. So electronic circuits, when again, you talk about my computer is running at, at 2.5 gigahertz. What you're really saying is 2.5 billion times a second, the Boolean circuits are being measured. They resolve and they're and we call it clocked, where the, you know, if you're trying to add to a, to a, to a, to a Boolean addition, the, you, still, you set up your circuit such that by the end of the clock pulse, the value is, is is measurable have a a boolean relation to the side again if you're if you're inverting you want to make sure that your inverter can can stabilize the other side to be the opposite of what's coming in by the time the clock pulse hits would you think a good analogy yeah. would be an analog uh, like for example the analigma how do you pronounce it? the analytica uh, what is it the app the anti what a contraption i hate that name of that thing the anti, anti the, whatever that thing was with the gears the antilimbica. Is that even answered? I don't know. I hate pronouncing certain words. But the contraption with gears, would you say that that um, the equivalent for your 2.4 gigahertz would be a gear that's moving around, and each time the gear passes something, it does something, that's one clock tick of the clock. Yes, and then that, that, that typically what happens in these electronic that, circuits by the way? Antilimbica? Is, is you have, the, you have these clock paths, these, these pulses that go through your, your circuit. And what they do is that they they they're, they're a gate where they where the charges are varying, but eventually by the time the the, the clock pulse hits, that that circuit is 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 small enough that it will will stabilize by the time you get to um, having a pulse. The reason why you need to have that be stabilized is because otherwise, if you were to measure it in real time, you'd find that its lot its value would bounce around quite a bit until it stabilizes. To, um, to again an and if you have a a, a a a true a true going into an and you'll get an a true coming out but if you watched it over time you might see that that output flip back and forth until it has a chance to stabilize because mm -hmm. you know, because underneath this this digital world is really this analog world and i know that people bring up these misnomers about plonk things and quantization um, the quantization is not like it's the world is digital. Quantization no, it just means you're really unresolvable. Is that, is that you're, you, 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 there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a point at which you try to, try to magnify and yeah. you just get fuzz. Yeah, it's, it's unresolvable at the Planck length. And that's back to unknowable, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. It's one of, the things that, one of the things that was really difficult for me to get my head around in, in, in quantum mechanics was that um, antitheric. Antitheric, antitheric. How do you? Somebody pronounced it. Yeah, antitheria, yes. theria, antitheria. I'm gonna say it like that. Whatever. Yeah. The mechanism. Yeah, I know exactly what it is. I can't say that word for some. 
Antikythera. Antikythera. There you go. Okay, perfect. Yep. Yeah, Antikythera. There we go. Boom. Done. Antikythera. What a um, bad... Hey, great words so, like that. You think Greeks were <laughs> Antikythera. Come on. Um, but but for Greek is a, has a very important foundational language, so... Right. You um, know what? I bet I bet if I had a few drinks, I, I probably could never pronounce Antikythera. Ever. <laughs> um, and, and and by the way, I don't pronounce that as a Greek, so, so I apologize. Yeah, I'm not even trying the Greek, Greek thing. Greek. Yeah. No, I'll take Antikythera, but... Anyways, finish your, your your thing so we can finish off with the diagram in so, got about ten so, minutes. So, so the thing is with, with with this this business is that that the the, the Boolean logic is really about it, it's a calculus, it's a form of calculation where you have two values and you have three operators and everything else is that's your axiom, that's your set of axioms. Everything else falls from that. Now, when you get into something like for example prepositional calculus, it's a branch of logic. It's 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 actually based upon Boolean stuff, but unlike first order logic, it 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 does not deal with um, you know um, these non logical objects. It's it's actually is a um, again it's it's a, it's a higher level version, but but underneath it really comes down to back is just a Boolean set. So with this diagram, we have a Boolean item. We have we have we have two values. The belief P B and the proposition P, and you either believe or you don't, and the proposition is true or it's not true. And so you see in the diagram, those four combinations are everything that Boolean says. Because again, um, we're not dealing with a multivariant logic like it's half true. We're not dealing with things that are 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 indeterminate. We are dealing with a Boolean system where you believe or you don't. The proposition is true, or its proposition is not true, and and everything else from that flows. Yep. So we now have the, and you see in those diagrams, you see the four states, and you see that what Steve has done as as named them, right? So so what do you mean by named them? Well, he has he has declared that strong is a belief, and weak is you don't believe. Notice, so notice, by the way, when you see about the, the thing about the weak, the weak includes agnostic. See, that agnostic is a combination of the weak atheist position and the weak theist position. Right. And by the way, like I said, I changed one of my proofs just recently, um, and it was because somebody brought to my attention. And by the way, this was a person who didn't even really know the logic very well, but they made me think about something, Right. This is why I throw these logics out there. I mean, nobody had ever brought this up before. Now, again, it, I got to admit, it was accidental. I don't think they really intentionally thought this. <laughs> but I, I'm, I don't want to discredit what they were saying, but it didn't seem like they were new. But it made me think a little bit. And so I, it didn't make my, my proof wrong, but I, I changed from an equality to implication, right? Because I think it makes more sense. Instead of me saying weak atheism equals agnosticism equals weak theism, you know, People knew what I meant by it. I think it makes sense to be an implication there that weak atheism, by not holding to the negation, implies agnosticism. Does that make more yes. sense? Yeah. So, sure. I mean, I changed my proof on that. And that wasn't like the proof was wrong. I mean, there's no logical fallacy here. It's just that instead of having, an, it. It, it, instead of having an equality there, I'm happy with an implication, which I think is, relates the concept better. Because yeah. logically, of so course, they are different things. So back to this with this with this state of you see the word agnostic. The word agnostic is including an and of of the weak of atheism and the weak of theism. The conjugate. Hmm? Yeah. So so an agnostic is is a weak atheist and a weak theist. Uh, um, Kieran Maki says, I don't get why Keith Burgess Jackson imported the S into his analysis of essentially the same idea. Uh, sort of. Um, Keith Burgess, uh, Dr. Jackson actually used, and I, I don't know why, I still haven't figured out why, he actually used, uh, I don't mind having the subject in there, right? If you, if I say BSP, what that means is the subject believes P. If I have A, it means the agent believes P. That's all that when you see it. Like, for example, I use uh, KAP, because in one paper, you know, they use the agent. So a KAP implies CAP would mean knowledge requires certainty. That's called the strong knowledge acceptance case, which I don't hold to. But yeah, you could add an index goal. You can ask something like a, a subject or an A. What I get confused is why did he use G? Maybe Landon could tell me. He used something like uh, KSG rather than KSP, right? 
he used G to represent a proposition, which you're fully able to do in math. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just wondering if he had a specific yeah. reason why he used G rather than P. I wonder why I can't. If that is, that, if now you say that is true. He used G and Y. Usually, G, usually I use right. F and G and for, it, for composite functions. That's how I sure, use it. Yeah. Sure, sure. That's a common, that's a common, common nomenclature. Nomenclature, right. Um, so I don't know why he used KSG, and I, 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 mean, I could ask him. I mean, one of these days I hope to get him on. He's still alive. <laughs> he still teaches somewhere. That would be, a, that would be an interesting question of, of what was there. It may have been that that was a common parlance, and he was just, just, just accurate yeah. as opposed to he invented that way. Yeah. I'm um, going to reach out to him so, one of these days because like, I know where he works, and I, and I know he's still an associate like, professor. Here's, here's another professor. thing that uh, folks, folks consider as a life lesson. When you don't like something, don't jump to the conclusion that it's wrong. Yeah, but his, but his by the way, his logic was the same exact logic that I used. Um, he didn't have a Venn diagram like this, but his the way he describes it, he just used a different variable for the proposition. Sure, but the logic is exactly the same. And matter of fact, Doctor Malpass describes it exactly the same. So there's a consistency yeah. of normativity there. If Doctor Malpass, if Doctor Malpass says, "Look, here's the logic," which I by the way have his, if he says, if Doctor Jackson says, "Here's the logic." And I say, here's the logic, but I just, again, I, I use I, I use the same logic, but I describe it in a different way, a more visual way. And I have a proof that comes out of it for a special pleading argument, which I don't think anybody's done before. Now, somebody has said that they've heard somebody else do that. Um, and a friend of mine, Dave, actually, from a, a podcast. I don't know if Dave got it from me. I didn't get it from Dave. I've been running this long time, right? But I, this is, is a novel argument for me. But I... I didn't get it from from Dave from the uh, what's podcast is that the um oh, it's a really cool podcast I can't forget what it is um not the free thought podcast that's for sure um whatever it was but uh somebody had, um what is it uh it kills me here uh shoot but it doesn't really matter but anyways uh he 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 runs this argument as well now I again I think he may have cribbed it from me possibly but he runs it completely different but the end result is the same it's still a special pleading argument but. If he's he says the logic is perfectly fine, so all these people are saying the logic is fine. That no logic, right? I mean, Doctor Jackson, philosophy, he knows logic. Malpass is a logician. Uh, Landon's a Boolean expert. Uh, other mathematicians and ma masters and PhDs, they don't find anything wrong with it. So why is it that again there are some persons that have no expertise in philosophy, no education in philosophy, which told by logicians their their logic is wrong? I mean, if you have a person telling me. Land, if I say, look, Steve's wrong, and B not P or not B not P is a double negation, when we both know it, that's nonsense. They, yes. they. By the way, there's a there's a disreputable lawyer out there that pr promoted videos that saying that not B not P was a double negation because some other YouTuber said it. He finally corrected yeah. that. He actually said, you know what, Steve, you're right on this. This, you know, this other person was wrong. You've been right all along no, about in a court this. Of law, if if you put forth that 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 statement and the jury buys it. Right. Oh, they're, they're, yeah, but, but here's the thing. They've said I've been writing about the logic all along. They've just said they want to continue because of a blood feud that they've so, been told to do. So, so, so let me go back to say that, 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 that be very careful when what you, your action is, I don't like it, right? If you say you're hearing Steve and you see this diagram, you say you don't like it. Be, that should be an alarm bell for you because, because if, you, if you react on I don't like this, you will find yourself finding all kinds of, of perhaps stupid reasons, illogical reasons, uh, or, or fallacies, you know, impending fallacies to try to get what you like. So yep. if you don't like something, the first thing you should ask is, why don't I like this? What does it, you know, what, 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 what does it rub the wrong way? And, and am I wrong or am I misunderstanding or is it a disagreement in terms or whatever? But, 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 but again, people who hear Steve put this argument out and don't like it, they should be asking themselves, well, wait a minute, I don't like it. Why don't I like it? And can I convert that into something more meaningful? Because Steve, if someone comes up and says, hey, Steve, I don't like your, 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 your definition of theist, agnostic, the atheist, what would you say? I would say I really don't care what I'm using is exactly. normative. <laughs> the fact that the fact that you don't so, like it yeah, it makes no difference to me whether you mean, like it or not. It's, but, it's the way it's but, normally used in academia. But 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 here's here's the part of the thing is that if, if if you don't like something and that drives you to a position that's that's illogical, that is that is that is contradictory, you can get yourself into a really Absolutely. bad state. The people who begin to question God, but don't like being called an atheist, 
go through all often go through all kinds of of of, of distortions with the mental the, gymnastics the, 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 and fallacies where they go through. Yes, yes. Oh, so 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 one of my life lessons is that if you don't like something, that should be a warning to you saying, okay, as asked why and what does that what does that mean? Yep. Another thing is that that so let's let's say that you don't like this and you and and you don't and you hope it isn't true. The next thing is it's, a, it's coming upon you to begin to examine it, not to just throw out stuff to Steve and say, well, Steve is a blah, or Steve is a blah, or this person said this. That's not how you go about disproving it. So if you, so so I would say, and this is again part of the scientific method, if you look at the stuff, you'd say, well, okay, I can't sail Steve on the Boolean logic because it just is. It's a fact. The Boolean logic is just a fact. Sorry. Um, if you if you still don't like it, then you might start asking questions about terms, about about context, to see whether or not the reason why you don't like it is that you and Steve have a different set of terms, a different set of contexts. Because it may be that the reason why it rubs you the wrong way is because you and Steve are talking at from from different points of view. Right, but that's different, a different, different argument. Contexts. Look, there's a difference between somebody saying, um, "Steve, you're wrong because you're you're you're, you're making stuff up, you're changing things, you're strawmanning, blah blah blah." But, uh, other than somebody saying, "Look, hey, Steve, in your framework in the academic world, you're perfectly right on this. We don't use it this way in our community." Okay, those are both true statements, right? I uh, then the argument goes, "Well, let, you know, which one's more utility? Which one is better? Maybe I, I'm fine with that, right? But you then can't you can, say then you can have a, a real then discussion, you have a discussion about that, right? But they can't but insist that. To, well, if you try to basically say I don't like it, so therefore I'm going to try and come up with some conniving way to say the Boolean logic is wrong. I'll, I'll, I'm sorry, you're false. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, 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 no, that's what my other mathematician Fred. He said, look, if somebody could disprove this logic, they could probably get a Fields Medal. This is basic bullying stuff. <laughs> and he said this would pass yeah, any. Yeah. And again, I, I tell people I write in first or second year college level on on, on, on this particular topic, right? Um, you know, I've had four years of college, it's just I didn't get my degree. But I mean, I write first or second year stuff because I want people to understand it. Because my friend Ozzy, a long time ago, he's, he's a very brilliant guy. He used to say, Steve, if you don't write things in a way they're going to be understood, um, you, you know, you kind of lose the audience, but you yeah. don't want to be too informal, right? So maybe find a middle yes. ground. And this to me is like the middle ground, right? This is to me first, and, and this is, you know, first year logic. This is back to, so I was saying back, you know, with, with I, I, this is an elementary school challenge because you gave me this proof. And I said, yeah, yeah. Okay. But that proof is not useful to most people you're trying to reach yeah. and, and come up with, can you use things with with a minimum of symbols, a minimum of terms, and so you came up with a gumball. Yeah, I, so I have both, I have things written different ways. I have a more formal proof, still uses natural language, still first or second mm -hmm. year, but then I, I even have, you know, I have it broken down a little bit. I have different ways of explaining the same concepts, right? But I still have a more formal proof that I use, yeah. which is, again, not like a, it's not like a, a PhD level by any stretch of imagination. This is first or second year logics. Same thing with my mathematical yeah. proofs. Most of my math stuff that I did, like back, back when, when I was doing... Uh, Mathematical explanations of calculus. This was Calc two level stuff, which is you know, maybe two second third year college. Maybe maybe I don't know. I, what, when you what would you put Taylor series in? Calc two. Uh, second year Calc two probably. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, it's not like it. And by the way, I heard it gets easier after that. I heard even a, once you get even the higher levels of Calc, it's actually a little bit easier because you don't understand the concepts by then. The yes. hardest part of Calc two is understanding the concepts, right? And I didn't take Calc two, but I still had to learn about Taylor series. We did, but. You know, I also had to learn about matrix, well, although I didn't take matrix theory. We took uh, college at level algebra where you, you still have to learn about matrixes, but uh, and, and real column manipulations and, and, and what is it, uh, Gauss Jordan elimination methods. These are high level functions and stuff that you learn really master at high levels in, in college. I didn't get to that level. But when you have college level, uh, at least understanding the, the terminology and the concepts, then you build upon those and you master those. I never got to the mastery level clearly. But I did learn the yeah. concepts. And so uh, somebody had asked, uh, um, uh, what was here? Uh, oh, about the G thing. This makes sense. They use G for God. And you know, they even pointed that God represents the proposition that God exists. And I, and I read that many times. But they're using G to actually mean God. So instead of having P being proposition, they, they're using G to represent proposition to God, which is, this, okay, okay, that's just not normative. That's uh, what I'm asking. Probably, I, 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 that may not be the best use of, of, of terms because, again, you don't want it to, you don't want to bind your variables. Yeah, that's what I think it's too, it, I think it's too explicit by using G in that particular case. Yeah. 
Yeah, if yeah. that if that's indeed the case. So back to saying, if you don't like something, I mean, I didn't like when Feynman began to present quantum mechanics to me. I didn't like it, and and rather than, but but the thing that that maybe was my saving grace was that I said, I you, know, you just explained talk to me about relativity, and now you're bringing in quantum mechanics, and there seems to be a contradiction here. There seems to be something not doesn't fall right, and. And Simon, Simon got quite excited and said, "You know, yes, go out there and, and figure it out, right? It is it. Don't do, do the work yourself, like right? It, and therefore, yeah. I, therefore, I'm going to try. Don't listen and, to me. And do the work yourself, it. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, 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 Steve, if someone doesn't like what you're presenting and wanted to wanted to do some encounter, what are some of the ways that they could try and and?" Well, they, what you're they saying. can come up with a Venn diagram that shows this is not the case. They can show a you know a, a, a case where, if you have a proposition that you don't have a negation of it for some reason, you can show that uh, if if you have a belief that is true, for some reason a belief that is false doesn't exist. I mean, you could try to 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 falsify it many different ways. I I, I think but, it's but let's, let's, let's say be, you don't try to you you because you, bashing yourself against the Boolean. It's gonna be it's gonna be hard pressed to do that. Yeah. Yeah. But but maybe there's other ways that you can go about doing it. Maybe you can argue from the point of utility what's useful. But that doesn't change the, the but that doesn't change the argument that I have though. Even if yeah, even if they have a better utility yeah, argument, so, it doesn't so, change my argument at all. So you know, if someone doesn't like what you're doing, they can accept it, but say that's not my preferred nomenclature. Right, but that's not a defeater to the argument. And by the way, the argument that th this all relates back to my special pleading argument. This right here is not really an argument. Yeah. This is just explaining the logic yes. right i wouldn't say that this is a, yes. an actual argument per se obviously but the argument is that if you allow for weak atheism you need to allow for weak theism so a theist can say that anybody who believes doesn't hold the belief there are no gods is a theist which shocks yes. the conscience but then they, they the fallback to them is well by definition a theist is somebody who believes in god but now you're back to definition of semantics which has nothing to do with the argument the argument is saying yeah. that if you change one definition from you know or you you don't allow for the strong case to be the the, the 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 way that you're using these terms, and you allow for the weak case to be, which is merely not believing, you have to allow the theist to do the exact same thing, because normatively atheism is the belief that God does not exist, and normatively theism is the belief that God exists. These are not prescribed, though; these are descriptive, right? So you can't say by definition a theist is this. If if, if my argument is arguing, well, if this is just a description, then you have to allow a theist to describe theism to be a lack of belief of a God's non-existence. It has to allow for that same thing, or that is, this is where by definition comes in, a special pleading. This is my whole argument, mm -hmm. and I think it's unassailable. I really, yeah. I, but if people want to try but, to, that's but, fine. But but, but, but but if you wanted, someone would reject what you're doing, they shouldn't reject it based upon the Boolean logic. That'd be, they, that'd be foolish, there, there but they try. There are other try. ways to go about it. Um, and I'm thinking, well, well, okay, utility, like I say, what you're, what you're arguing is not useful to them. Okay, but that's but that doesn't make my argument incorrect though. It doesn't or, steal the argument. Or yes, that's again because 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 but this is back to saying don't assume because you don't like something that that something is wrong. Yeah, I mean I'm not because I'm not out there saying a bunch of theists are going to say look I'm going to call you a theist now because of this because they they want to hold the position that God that theism is somebody who believes that God does not exist or somebody that believes that God does exist. So I get that right. It's not a, really a this is not a utility argument by any stretch of imagination, right? It just has to. It's an argument is. You have to them allow them to do so, and if they want to, great. Would they probably do it? No. But if you allow one, you gotta allow the the other because that is sure. exactly what a special pleading is. And yeah. uh, again, I don't think that them just saying it's non utilitary um, is a defeater. It's, it clearly is not a defeater to the argument. But like you said, okay. when they go after the logic here, they're already done. I mean, it's just like where are they going to go with that? And then they they yeah. they go. Well, in your second thing, you have P equals this. You're changing the proposition. It should be the negation of this. No, that isn't the negation. It's just restated as the proposition. There are two individual yeah. uh, diagrams, right? I mean, cool. uh, that's all it is. I'm just sure. restating the negation as the proposition. You, you can do this. I'm, ch I'm, I'm, re I'm reassigning the content to P in the second one. That's all. Yes. So, so BZ Feynman um, says... So how does the aspect of pantheism fall into the aspect of of the you know um, agnostic right the the does not believe the proposition and does not believe the proposition is true does not believe the proposition is false yeah so where where does pantheism fall into that 
Uh, well, pantheism would be the position that the universe is God, right? I, I put that as I, – when I talk about theism, I'm very clear in my usages. I talk about non-classical theism, but I also negate things like uh, Spinoza's God or God of philosopher or pantheism because those are not what I'm going to be put into the supernatural set. Those sure. are going to be more of a natural thing. So, again, I'm very clear by you, my use of terms. I even have in my, my arguments and my, um, my uh, positions, when I use the word G with a capital G – it is non-classical. I'm not referring to just the, the Yahweh God. I'm not, the, I'm not referring to that. When I say God exists, I'm talking about God, gods, gods, Romans, whatever. I'm saying God as implies any type of a being, not just the Christian God when I say God exists. It could be, you know, some God exists. Now, if I want to be more precise, it would be like at least one God exists is often used as an example. But I want to make this so basic and simple that I don't want to have a long phrase. I just want to be... God exists to represent the concept of some God that exists. Now, you think Thor is a God, then God exists is true, right? Right? I mean, it, if, yes. you, if you think a pencil is a God, then sure, in this particular case, God exists. But then I ask the follow-up question. Okay, for example, like my cup, right? My, my mysterious cup here. Um, if I have this as a God and I have another one, which I have four of these things, but if I have another one, can you tell me the, the demarcation between one and the other? What's the delimitating property that makes one a God and the other not. And nobody ever has been able to, to answer that question. In which case, it's a moot question, right? Because I then I just say, well, I'm not using that particular case of what I mean by God exists. If you want to, if you say, look, I believe this is a God, therefore God exists. Okay, great. The logic still holds. I think it's silly and I think it's non-utilitary, but the, the logic still holds either way, right? Yeah. But I would have placed that under theism, under non-classical theism. And non-classical theism is a position... Um, unlike the okay, cla let's just describe classical. Classical theism would be that if you believe the Christian God exists or not, the, the geo Judeo Christian, right? For a deist, that would be a non theist, right? A deist is a non theist under the classical system. If you want to know more about that, yes. like, like, uh, look under look what classical theism, Dr. Kenny Rhodes promotes classical theism. I don't hold to that, so this not classical theism, right? Again, non classical, not that classical, meaning not classical word usages. So when I say non-classical, I am not taking it as the case that a deity would be, would be not under theism. In this particular schema, a deity is a god, right, deification of any kind, um, uh, any kind of a, what we consider to be a deity or the deist god falls under theism. But, but the difference is under classical, theism is a personalized deity that's considered to be the judo christianic version, a personalized god. But if you say, well, a god created the universe and then vanished, or... You have something like pantheism um, uh, or pan pandeism, where the God created the universe and became the universe. I believe that's pandeism or weird yeah. names for these things. Um, I'm going to put that under the same thing. Where the, if you believe God existed or existed, this is, as long as you express your terms properly, which I have in my, my blog. Yeah. Right? If you go to my, my positions, I make these things very clear. Um, so I've always said God exists also includes if God does exist, right? Sure. I don't make the distinction there. So when somebody says, well, what about a God that no longer exists? I've already included that. I've already said, look, uh, if you want to evaluate this proposition, evaluate it as such, did God exist incorporates God existed because it's non-temporal like that. Yeah. Okay. So, By the way, I'd like to, to shout out to David McInnes, a really nice guy who is doing a lot of stuff for uh, content creators behind the scenes. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you, Dave. Hey there. But, uh, you know, we do got to wrap this up as well over two hour mark. I want to keep it brief. Uh, we might have a part two. Who knows? Um, okay. uh, we, we probably haven't even scratched the surface well, about some of the stuff. But, I mean, we got to start wrapping it up pretty soon. But, but how much longer do you want to go? 15 minutes, maybe? But, but, yeah, sure, sure. But okay. again, Steve, you know, I'm glad we were able to, you know, to move on to some of the more, more in depth things there. And that's why um, I just wanted you and I. But, I thought we would be better to move on because yeah. the people joined would be cool. And and I think you know, I think there's, there's there's still other things that you could you go for. But if you wanted, so what would you think is for the next level discussion beyond what we have that that we should look at? Well, I mean, I, we still have to get into justification conditions, and uh, we might want to talk a little about skepticism. We might want to talk about are we rational to hold certain beliefs and why? What does it mean to have a true belief? What does it mean to have knowledge? What does it mean to have um, a false belief? Uh, can you have false knowledge? Can you have what's the, like the swamping problem? Why do we value? Which is, this is axiology, but why do we value knowledge over justified true belief? Uh, or just, not excuse me, unjustified true belief. If I say, look, I have a belief, it is true. If I say I have true belief, why do we care if it's justified or not? Why do we care that we have knowledge? What does it add to anything? 
You know, yeah. some people argue there, it doesn't. Example, it, the issues of presuppositionalists that say there you know, we presuppose that God is truth, yeah. and therefore exactly. You know, I got I, I have a cup in front of me. I believe it's a cup, and it's true that I have a cup. Right, regardless of my justification, right? That 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 is the case. It is a cup, and I believe it, and it's true. So if it's justified by justificationism or uh, uh, some kind of a reliableism, right, which is a reliable state, uh, that I have some kind of reliable mechanism by which I'm deriving what I consider to be knowledge, does it really matter whether I know this is a cup or not? Is there any value to be had by that? Many philosophers and epistemologists argue, what is the diff? Why, why do we have? Why do we value knowledge? By it being justified as opposed to the fact that it's just, it is, it, this is yeah. a cup. It is true. I believe it. Why do we care whether it's justified or not or, or, or reliable or not? That's a great question. I, I got to tell you, I don't have an answer for that. Yeah. So, so it's called the swapping problem. Things in, in, in a later, yeah. a later set again, because this is, once you get beyond the arguing against Boolean logic. Um, yeah, I think we're done with that. Yeah. I mean, let's get it out yeah, there. We're done. Landed. <laughs> Boolean logic. Anybody who argues the logic, I, I would say at this point, um, Tell them to, to put up a shut up. Tell them, look, you need to have an yeah. a proof for using Boolean logic, predicate logic, propositional, or whatever, to show Steve is wrong. If you're going to say his logic is wrong, you need to demonstrate it. You think there's a category, you need to demonstrate it. You think, and using yeah, logic, so, show us the, the proof. So, so I guess you see, so you're saying that the next, the next place to go from here beyond this is to talk about knowledge and belief and, and the values of those things. And why we might yeah. value axiology? Yeah, the value. Because yes. by the way, you may—I I, I don't know if you would know this or not. Uh, because Land and I assume knows everything, but ethics itself is part of axiology. And the reason being is—is is what we value to be true as far as our moral code, right? When we say we 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 want to to have an understanding of morality, so we can do the right thing, right? That is yeah. a value thing. There's we hold as a society this value to be had. By doing the right course of action over a yes. wrong course of action. These are what we call morally permissible, morally forbidden, morally obligatory. And these are very, and, right, these are all axiological right. things. Ethics falls into axiology. There Christians, there are some Christians who do the following. They sit there and say, you know, the only moral code, the only ethics comes from God in the Bible. And if you're atheist, that means you have no basis of morals. And you might end up becoming an axe murderer because... And then they'll say, and because you don't want to be an axe murderer, it's because secretly you believe in God. Yeah, um, yeah. That, that, that's, a, that's a line of logic. And, 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 and that's where, again, we can talk about beliefs, morals. Yeah, I love that. So Let's forth. do that next time. Um, and by the way, people want to know more about the Swampy problem, as, as Baki points out. Linda, her name's Dr. Linda Zagzabeski. Uh, love her stuff. Um, she talks about the Swamp problem. She also argues that all belief first theories of knowledge have epistemic luck issues. I think she's right on that. Um, but we get in more deep into this stuff like that the next time, um, and maybe get a third party in, I think would kind of be interesting as well, but sure. let's wrap it up on this. Um, look, this is, this is, hey. this is right. The gumballs and gumball, uh, the God and gumballs argument, which uh, I'm not convinced it's an argument per se. It's more of an explanation of how people get this, this, this analogy, analogy you yeah. know, they'd use it incorrectly. Um, but there's no logical errors I found in that gum, God and gumballs, uh, better explained. Um, people say, well, it makes things more complicated. No, it doesn't, because I've seen this error happen often. And then they say, well, you're just you're just redefining words. No, I'm not. There's no right. Re because because that's what analogies here. do. Because again, the analogy is stuff, people people accept that that a that a, a natural number is either even or odd. Yes. It's not both. Right. Or, and then, or therefore neither. you you have a natural number of objects. Do you believe it's even or odd? And 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 but 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 that's because the, the 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 logic the boolean logic applies to belief in an odd number of gumballs or the lack of belief well that's why beliefs are dichotomous knowledge. though but that's exactly why beliefs yes. are dichotomous look um it is a dichotomy the gumballs are either or even or odd right no matter what i believe those are that's even or odd that's a dichotomy but my beliefs are actually four different things here again four one i believe that they're even i believe they're odd i believe neither or in theory, you can have a state of irrationality. I believe both. Yes. Okay. That is, it. if you get into dosastic logic, there are states yes. that are that are just really out there. Sure. Um, so yeah. This is why you, this is why dosastic logic allows for certain things like um, Moore's paradox um, and what's called a peculiar reasoner, reasoner uh, mm -hmm. that you don't have in classical logic per se, right? Because this is where you get more granularity in these other forms of, of logic, but. The reality is you could be in a state of confusion, cognitive dissonance, whatever, where you believe both to be true. I mean, that, that's not far-fetched. So you do have 
four actual positions, but since we consider the fourth to be a rational state, we don't include it in anything, right? Um, in classical. But here we go in classical, a predicate logic here. Uh, believes P, believes not P, or believes neither. Those are your three main yes. states. It, that's not a dichotomy. Right? That's just not. I mean, if anything, it's a trichotomy, but even then, it's not a dichotomy because you do have, you can believe neither. Or you can believe, me, you can believe both. Yes. So people need to take that into account. But uh, I hope these people watch this stuff and I hope people really start looking into themselves. When you have these atheist activists out there saying that I'm wrong, challenge them. You, you yes. hear somebody say, and hey, Steve's wrong. Say, explain to us why without using negative rhetoric. Explain to us that, and, and, why that because Steve's not, a, you know, just because he's a mean poopy head. And again, if, if, if your reaction is, I don't like this, you should have alarm bells going off in your mind because it might show that you're prejudiced against something. It might show that something bothers you, but then identify what bothers you and put it in terms of how <clears throat> something that's logical or something that's substantive, mm -hmm. at least. Yeah, this is just say I don't I don't like I don't like Steve. Put it as a proof. That's not useful. Uh, put it as a, uh, I don't understand why these atheist activists by fiat say I'm wrong when they've never produced a single proof yeah. or nor, nor any evidence or citation. Yeah. What they'll do or, is they will instead of instead of arguing about whether Steve is true or not. So um, why so why is not? That's put, all. Put 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 forward something that's more useful. Well, I, I, no, I've seen people do that. Look, uh, David Silverman will put forth that kind of argument, and so will GM Skeptic. I mean, so they have a utility argument, which, by the way, we, we can be happy to have a discussion with, whether it's more utility. But at least they, they have that argument. That's out there. People have done that. But but David Silverman, you know, he's not out there actively saying that I'm wrong. He dis, he disagrees with me. But I don't think he's going to sit there. He hasn't as of yet. In the, in the And we've been communicating quite a bit, and... Yes. You know, we, we much, he doesn't want to get back into that, right? So I don't think he wants to put himself out there to say that I'm wrong. Um, and I'm okay with that, right? I mean, if he wants to go for it, I'll take him on, I'll destroy yeah. him. Yeah. But he's not, he doesn't, to him, it's, he's more worried about the utility aspect, and that's perfectly fine. But yeah. other, so other, other activists don't do that. They actually say that I'm wrong, and I'm sorry, if you're going to say I'm wrong, you need to, if you can't show it, you don't know it, man. And if you're talking about quantum gumballs, um, quantum but, I mean, given gumballs are mass. The, the 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 wave function is 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 so small that that I mean the, the is that that yeah, you have pretty certainty where whether the gumballs are but if you said instead you know are there an even or odd number of electrons in this volume um, due to quantum mechanical states you could have electrons that tunnel outside by the time you're counting them or tunnel back in when you finish counting so so in some ways that's a case where where the number of of electrons in a volume may be indeterminate. Yes. Um, and and well, that in, tries in to be theory, the being inside and outside the box. In theory, at any given time, at any given specific time, at the resolvable level, there's a certain amount of electrons in the universe. That is either odd or even. Yes. Now, the problem is that you run into is that gets confusing because when you get to the quantum level, they're in superposition or they exist or they're, in, what is, I mean, but if you have, if you have to quantize it, at any given time, for any any given particle, there's a set number of particles that have to be relating to have a bijection to the natural numbers. Yes, and, and if you're rational, you'd be agnostic on the on the number Absolutely. that the number of electrons in your universe is even. Well, yeah, and right? the reason why I'd be agnostic on that is because there's no information that, available to why it would be the case there's an even number of electrons over odd. And again, that changes so rapidly, so you'd have to be talking about a very time, select time slice of time that's not resolvable because why? Planck's time. So, yeah. so, so again, if, if you don't like something, start with saying, wow, I don't like something. That's, I have a problem. Not Steve has a problem. You have a problem. Yes. And how do you resolve you don't like it? Well, you can ask yourself, do I misunderstand it? Do I have beliefs that is rubbing the wrong way that I need to examine? I don't, I don't want to go through the effort examining it. Or is there some other, or is there, is there a problem with he's using terms that are different than what you're using? Or is he using a, a set of axioms, as a, 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 a context that's different than you? Once you resolve that, then you can come back to Steve and say, okay, I'll accept that your Boolean logic is, is correct, but let's have a different discussion yeah. about is this, is this, is this mode of, of dissection um, better or more accurate or has more utility or... And, that's, and, a, that's a question that Steve would have to I would, have I would, I would love that conversation, and I will leave with this. Just don't try to debate facts. I will, I'll leave with this. 
when somebody sort of says, well, Steve, your, your argument leads to the state of uh, somebody who could be both an atheist and a theist, you're right. That's, but that's not a, <laughs> by that, by the way, that's not a contradiction in this particular case. Why? Because they're accepting different what's called senso lato or weak case definitions. Yeah. When you do yes. that, then it, yes, it does. And by the way, this is more of a vertic verticality type paradox because it's not. There's no, there's no contradiction to be had if you allow for different definitions of atheist and theism. So somebody could be both an atheist and a theist in the weak case. Yes. Now, would it be a contradiction yep. if they're both strong? Yes. You cannot be an atheist and theist if you're using it as a strong case. This is why, again, sure. utility, sure. strong case is more precise. This is why we use more definitive uh, understandings of words were more, more narrow scope or sensu stricto or sensu strictissimo for this very reason because it doesn't lead to even things like well yeah okay yeah you could be an atheist or theist at the same time yeah. what good does that so, do what, why would you want to describe somebody like that what are you oh, i'm an atheist and theist well how, okay why because i'm a weak condition both okay logically that's right sure i'm i'm a weak condition atheist i'm a weak condition theist i'm an agnostic i'm all of them so I'm an atheist and a theist if you take the lack of belief or do not believe uses of terms. That's, that, that's what this whole thing proves, too. Yeah. But what um, good is that? By the way, I would reach, reach out to, to uh, negative exponents that said, you know, I have a problem that he said that, that, even, that, that I'm even more confused than I was when the stream <laughs> that's began. A, that's always what we want to so, hear. So, so, so negative exponents, I, I, I would say that that's a good sign. Because your brain's processing. Says that you're, you're, you are you are processing. You are being cognitive dissonance. You're not merely accepting something based upon faith because of what Matt said or Steve said or whoever else I said. You know that, that that's a that's a good thing that, that that you're confused. The next thing to do with that confusion is to study and to figure out. Yeah. So confusion is really your brain saying, "I've got some things that don't match." Let me figure it out. I did the same thing so when I, I did. Think, I would say I would say that this, if, if if you come away confused, it's not as as an ideal of outcome, but it says that you're open to thinking. figuring out what's going forward. Yeah, I did the same thing with the with the uh, Dr. Malpass and William and Craig thing. I left that interview going, I I'm a little confused here. And you know what I did? I I I asked Alex, right, Dr. Malpass. I'm like, dude, can you help me explain this? What the hell you guys were talking about? Because this is confusing to me. I, and you know what he did? I, again, my, he my, explained my, it. Yes. And I took three days yeah. to process it. Three days. I'm not even kidding. Three days I had to process this in my head what the hell he was trying to say. And then after I got it, the little light bulb came on, right? And I, and I was like, oh, okay. Still hard as hell. Still have to figure out a way to relate this. But I at least I had a better understanding than before. And so confusion can lead to good outcomes, sure. Yes. And, and again, it's, it's back to saying, so, so when... Um, back again to say that, that, that if someone shows that you're wrong, they've done you a favor. You may not like that state, but but then take that action and figure out what it is you do have. Yes. And if you're confused because you can't make up your mind, that's also good because you're beginning to question. Again, science is about asking questions. And, and so from a <laughs> scientist point of view, I would say congratulations, negative exponents. Now you're more confused. Now your next step is to become less confused, not by simply saying, I don't like this and rejecting it, but to figure out and, and seek more information. Absolutely. All right, we're going to wrap it up. Um, big shout outs to, um, got, got some uh, cool people out there. Uh, so I want to wave hi to Dick Dawson and the Shills. Go check yeah, them hi, out. Hi, Dick. Big fan, big fan of those guys over there. I want to thank again my, my Patreons and my members like Zeshi. He hasn't showed up for a while, but Zeshi has, follows me on Twitter. Um, so I appreciate you coming by, Zeshi. I, I, I'd like to see you more around more often because I knew you do support the channel. God's Auditor, big shout out to you. Um, and of course, Dave McGinnis is out there. Uh, Maki uh, and a few other people. So I, I, I do recognize when people come watch these things. I know that they don't get as many views as some of the other stuff we do. I, I find that unfortunate. But I don't, I'm trying to minimize the amount of things that people call drama. We, we yes. have to address it sometimes. Thank and, you, Steve. Yeah, I and, appreciate that. Yeah, and, and <laughs> uh, you're welcome. And by the way, I, I like the science, the final stuff too. Now, I'm not saying that we won't address it certain times, but it's, it's, it's definitely gone way low the, because I prefer this type of content. And even though they don't make as much money, they don't make any views, I do on my channel what I want to do. It's not, it's not for anybody else's benefit mostly, but my own. But I do respect the people that watch and they like this kind of stuff. But the people that don't want to watch this kind of stuff, but they rather see the drama... Go watch other channels. I get it. I, yeah. I don't. I do understand it, right? But I am not doing any of these things for views because if that was the case, why am I doing stuff like this that is not going to have 
you know, 6,000 <laughs> views, like some of the other stuff I know I can do. I can do video yeah. right now and talk about certain things. And I'll get 6,000 views. 10,000 views. Maybe. Steve, I really appreciate this, this discussion. I think we, we awesome. were successful so. and, and, and bring it up to the next level. Um, what I would suggest that you and I figure out in the background what the next kind of set of stuff, because there's certainly more to talk about. Absolutely. And once we figure out that the next context, then we can schedule it and, and, do that. and move. And move we got to schedule a DEF CON 1 science. We'll figure out something yes. All right. Yes, All right, guys. we have some more science stuff too. Thanks uh, again. Thanks, thank you, Landon. Uh, by the way, shout out to Amy Hogan too. Love you. Um, all right, yeah. so share this video, like, comment, subscribe, all that that chill stuff. Become a member, and become, become a patron. Become a patron, and so forth. And I also want to give a shout out to my Milwaukee atheists. Um, oh good, yeah, good group Landed. of people there. I mean, uh, Lawrence's crew, absolutely love the Milwaukee yes. atheists. Yeah. So we do. I do support atheist channels, contrary to what people believe. Uh, if they're good, <laughs> um, La uh, I mean, Lawrence has a really good channel with Milwaukee atheists. We and I both read for him before. They, they 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 do some 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 great scholarship I, over there. I totally agree. And they that. have fun uh, Bible reading. So I'm gonna be. I think I can be on. I think I mean they got me uh, next week uh, reading Proverbs or something like that. Nice. So, uh, All check right. Well, out. let's let's take this out. Um, I'm gonna mute everything and just do the end card. But I will tell people send this video to people uh, or show them if they think I'm wrong. Give them this video. Is it? This, this, this video has it all in there. I mean, and give them my blog, www.greatspeakingcommunity.com, which is in the video description. And then ask him, well, what is your evidence that he's wrong? Where's your proof? Where's your logic? That's it. I don't care about anything else about Steve. He could kick puppies, whatever. Show me the Boolean logic is wrong. Show me his arguments wrong. Show me citations Well, why he's not wrong. I guarantee it, nobody's going to be able to do that. And all they're going to say is, well, we're not going to bother because he's wrong by fiat. Now you have your answer. Because Landon and I, we're willing to put our money where our mouth is here and show you why this is correct. With that, good night, guys.